We are live. Is anybody watching us? Well, well you're watching us. Right? What show is this? Somebody's watching us. I don't know who's watching us. Folks, welcome to the... It's my wife. Con. Well, all right. Well, it could be Rachel. Uh, welcome to the Tolacon. My wife is. Special edition Talking Crit. This is the con wrap-up. We have none other than Zach Blazer from Frog God Games. Now, uh, there's going to be a lot of stories. I'm sure that will come out. From tonight, well, or uh, come out tonight. Yes, uh, we there were witnesses. Uh, at least two out of three are witnesses. <laughs> witnesses. Uh, oh, well, uh, don't, don't 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 just, don't uh. Let's, we can't talk about well, Skeeter's mode Mike of violated violated Skeeter. This is something Mike violated Skeeter, isn't it? Yeah, that's that. Yeah. That'll, that'll yes. cover, I'm sure that'll be covered Monday night. So. Oh yeah. Well. well oh God. oh, that's right. Yes. But yeah. So let, let's not waste that. the gold on that. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. No, I have nothing to say now. No, all my best stuff is gone. <laughs> oh, good idea. Don't leave incriminating evidence around. So I, I actually uh, was watching the uh, between last night and tonight. I watched the uh, Zoom uh, small press uh, special. You guys, uh, you Skeeter and a bunch of others did on uh, for TotalCon. Uh, yeah. I was like, damn, it was it was it was very good. There was a lot of a lot of good advice. Well, it should be good because they trot that out every time there's a, a convention seminar. They've done it like eight times in the past year, so it better be good by now. Hey, look, ever got one show, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, it actually did go very well. Um, I was actually – it made me feel good that the, the queen of gaming was pleased with it. And so – because Angelia, you know, as long as she's happy. No, we are happy to do it. Um, we had good people there. What surprised me was the actual competency of Skeeter Green running it like an MC. Ooh. You know, if you can keep him down to just, you know, four letter words without F in him, he can actually put on a pretty good show. Yeah, you know, it, it's it's surprising, but you want to know the secrets? He's no one's watching, right? Nobody's watching. Um, we're, we're, we let people in that had tickets, right? Or part of And then uh, Bill asked for the Zoom link. <laughs> <laughs> Did you block him? Oh, no, I gave him the link. Oh, Bill, sorry. We can't make it work with you. I don't know what's wrong. It's just not working. No, sorry, it's mostly because I knew he'd come up, right? And I knew right. Skeeter and I had a long experience of publishing all balls around him, and Skeeter always tells a story about the time that uh, Bill told him that he was no good at writing. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that would be uncomfortable with Bill being able to answer, so I just kind of, you know. I, I that do is, that is why you're, you're chief executive officer at a Frog Guy, because you make this. I'm uh, not chief executive just, officer at Frog Guy. He's, he's, he's the, you're, some, you're something. I don't know. You have a bunch of C's and he's, O's and stuff. He's, so. the, he's the coup. <sighs> I'm the coup of Frog I'm the coup of Frog Guy and the president of Necromancer. And that 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 about, you know, 75 cents will buy you a Starbucks. Man. Right. By, the way, by the way, one of us has uh, no pants on right now. You can If you can guess no, who it no, is. No, no, it no. Is not me. Get, uh, not me. Why Dude. spoil the surprise? Because well, not really a surprise. <laughs> it really wasn't a surprise, was no. it? No, no, no. Listen, I, I, I'm in pandemic mode. It's like, all right, well, I don't have to shovel the snow today. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, no. Well, you well know all our ice and snow is gone. I mean, he knows. there's Texas. It's all, it's melted. It was all gone. All gone today. No gone today? It was, it was a snow apocalypse Wednesday. It's a no apocalypse today. So. So it's gonna be it'll be seventy somewhere. degrees in two days. It's gonna be seventy. So what kind of show is this for people who are just now watching from Tolcon? <clears throat> um, it, I, you know, who knows? A bunch of unprofessionals. Oh, there's Angelia. Hello, hello, uh, <laughs> Angelia. You really? I, I'm trying to. You know, it, I, this this is a tried and true marketing method I'm using here. You know, I'm sorry, uh, Your Majesty. <laughs> <laughs> well, what we're doing? So this week we did shows uh, celebrating Totalcon because we all love Totalcon, even though I'm the only one here that hasn't been to Totalcon. I really wanted to mm -hmm. go to Totalcon. Oh, we'll but, have to uh, fix that for you. COVID, we'll COVID and COVID messed me up. So I hate COVID. Um, but anyway, so we are we've done a show uh Wednesday. Wednesday we had um uh, Alan Hammock on. Um by the way, one of these things is not like the other. See if you can guess which one. So we had Alan Hammock. The next night we had Chris Clark. Uh last night we had um uh, Angelia and her husband, and this night we have Zach Glazer. So one of these things is not like the other. Um, one of these things just doesn't belong. No, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm fine with that. <laughs> but no, we no, we, we wanted Zach on Saturday night. Well, I say that, but because um, 
this is the last night of the con. I definitely wanted to have somebody from Frog God on there because Frog God, we are Frog God are huge, huge backers of Total Con. We love what Angelia does. Uh, uh, Bill's been, Matt, Matt's been, every, everybody's been, but but I, I, really, I think everybody in the East Coast that, that belongs to Frog God Games has, has been. Yep, just you and Pax, dude. Me and Pax haven't met, haven't made it. The two fat guys, we we haven't made it there yet. But but anyway, so we're, we're going to spend uh, some time here talking to Zach, um, and we're going to do our part telling stories about Total Con, just telling uh, – we want to know what game you ran and, and how that went, Zach. Um, did you? Um, I ran the same game I always run, which is – I didn't run a game. I uh, <laughs> Actually, I did a seminar we just talked about. Um, I actually only run games – I run very rarely because uh, at cons, um, someone – I guess they would say in Star Trek has to have the con um, – it, it, you're somebody has to make sure everybody gets their games. Someone has to make sure that everybody, you know, gets their rooms. <laughs> Someone's got to make sure that everybody gets the booth. And so at cons, I hadn't been running games for a long time. I, the last game I ran was for the Frog Guard game day. And I'm signed up to do that again. Um, in about four weeks. I'll probably run one next time I go to uh, a, a physical con, just because uh, we're uh, whisper and venom is like, you know, the only thing I ever wrote. And so I'm gonna we're releasing that in five E. So since that's the only thing I've ever I'm gonna run that. <laughs> so well, also de- death and taxes. Don't 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 uh taxes. Burma Fed. I have wrote stuff, but yeah, death and I haven't taxes. wrote stuff in a long time. I was just telling uh, it was, it was, I had a stream that I was watching on uh, Friday. It was last night, and uh, she was talking about um, how great Teagle Manor was, and how she loved the map, and how if you open up the book of Teagle Manor, and how you can see how the maps separate, and how how they're able to take that huge map, and make it useful, and like. That was the last production thing I've done at Frog God. I was so touched <laughs> because I haven't. I'm not allowed to touch the Photoshop or anymore or anything else. <laughs> and because we have professionals working on stuff now, right? And so, um, because of that, um, uh, you know, our stuff shows it. If you, you, you guys will all see the bo- a box that we have coming out soon. We have our newest books are amazing. Our newest Indiegogo books are amazing. So, um, the company that I uh, run with, Bill Webb, basically um, has outgrown my ability to help produce for it. <laughs> so. by, by the way, oh. speaking of the, the Teagle Manor maps, uh, an inside story. Um, for those of you who have seen it, it's an absolutely beautiful book. Great maps. However, you may have noticed at some points or another, there are mistakes on the map. I would like to let you know that for one whole week, all that Gleiser and I did was go over that map and make sure every rat hole made it to another rat hole. Every door that was supposed to be there was supposed to be there. Every candlestick was in place and we got foiled by technology because um, it turns out that when the final copy of Tico Manor map was uploaded, it was not the final copy, right, Zach? It was a, it was a layered copy and it did not have all the corrections. And it, we, the, the upload wasn't, uh, this was the way it, it, it's been the correct maps available digitally. How's that? It was a labor of love. We and we worked very hard on that to make sure that everything was correct. And when I saw it, my heart broke because it was not everything was not one hundred percent correct. But in the it was really close. Even it was pretty that. close. There was a, just a few tiny things off. But you know how fans are. They notice. Uh, my my favorite story about that of all time was when uh, Rapunzel that came out for Five E. And we're talking a book. It's like this thick, right? Seven hundred page. I mean, how how big is that book? Four hundred pages. Eight hundred eighty-eight. Eight hundred eighty pages. And literally, I'm not kidding you. Literally, three hours after it came out, I'm getting emails that say, "Hey, by the way, I just wanted you to know on page two hundred and seventy-six, paragraph three, line two, um, you accidentally refer to this one room twice." Like how? How did you read it so fast? I, what? How, how? How do you find that so quickly? I mean, it's just crazy. So, you know, no matter all the editing we did in that book for months and months, these people would find it within two hours of reading the book and gleefully send an email saying, oh, you, no. know, we found a, you misspelled this word, uh, page 384, paragraph five, sentence two, word three. Hey, look, shame is a big motivator, right? And uh, <laughs> to be honest with you, that we've been, we've been improving consistently for a long time. I mean, if you go back to the old uh, stuff, like the old stuff from Necromancer that went through White Wolf, um, I saw Chris Promise made a post for the, about the, about, uh, the uh, Swords and Sorcery Studios' uh, first Monster Manual creature catalog or creature codex, whatever. 
He's like, there are errors all over here. I'm like, ha, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, it, it's, it's, a hard, it's a much harder process than you think. And to be honest with you, after talking to um, people I know at Wizards of the Coast, um, that there are not free of that at all. Um, and you find that, hey, we've had someone mention that as a, in a comment. But yeah, no, it's absolutely true. That, but the shame is a big motivator. Our books are getting better all the time. We have new processes in place to make sure it's better. Uh, we have a new guy, at Frog Guy, whose only job is to do VTT work. And the VTT work he does, part of that is trying to get our modules in there, like when they're still in draft mode, so they can make the module, but we before the book's printed, so they can be simultaneously released. What that does is that makes sure that the guy checking maps for Fancy Grounds will find every effing mistake there is. It's the greatest thing ever. Because when you have the dragon that doesn't fit in the room, he'll know. He'll know. Oh, uh, yeah, you know. Reading it, the other problem is, I don't know how much inside baseball people want to ever want to hear, but when you're reading these things for publication and you have so many different people in the process, you know, when I was doing it myself, it was a piece of cake. I knew everything about it. When you're doing it with authors that are high, the high you know, you find specialized people because they're great at it. You know, we have authors that are amazing. We have cartographers that are amazing. We have artists that are amazing. We have editors that are amazing. But each of these things comes in at different points in the process. And so you can make – an editor will find one or two things with the map that's not quite right. And then, you know, the converter will find it. But when the dude who's got to do it on, on the uh, fantasy grounds has to do it because these guys measuring the rooms, right? And uh, that right there is a huge check, and that kind of stuff helps. And we have huge um, – yeah, you're absolutely right. At, at Shadzar? But, uh, yep. I love the mimic uh, on the thing. It's bad, badass. No, um, – <laughs> The uh, you'll find everything, and that is we're make because that's true. We're making that part of our process. Michael Potter, I don't know how many of you guys know him. He does a lot of our fantasy grounds conversions. He's working with uh, Sean, who's doing our fantasy grounds. Uh, well, but VGT basically uh, oversight. Um, that's just something we've wanted forever. Uh, our our fantasy revert. No, they already get that. So uh. No, that's why we're doing it now. The fans ground the the state the, the comment is uh, please give the converter the raw ASCII text or a BOT of the PDF. We actually give them the word file. We can dump it to a .text file. We do that now because uh, uh, we're yep. PDF always makes the bad characters. You, nobody understands this more than me, man. I'm with you. <laughs> I am your guy here. I promise. Because we do lots of we do this book for example, right? This is coming out in five e. Oh, um, nice. Uh, we are going to actually do that soon. But oh, wow, one, of the, wow. one of the processes is you have to go and find the original Word doc, right? Well, all right. See this, the author there? He is useless to find original <laughs> Word docs, all right? And so I had to go and search through and find the InDesign file so we could actually find the original uh, text that we could use to create that. So the raw pieces of old files is uh, so important and we don't have any of those old necromancer stuff right so that makes it a challenge so we actually to, to the point before about pdf we have paid people to retype stuff i mean literally well let me give you an example this this is oh, also boy. coming out soon for 5e Ooh. right retyping re-editing and redoing that has taken us months ask mark greenberg anybody who knows mark greenberg yep. thank him He's a I, hero. I, I, I talked to him the other night, and he was working on it. He was weeping. As no, he was I, I know. And the thing is, he's making it better for everybody. Right? I'm so excited about Subclopian Deeps because I think it's one of our best products that was never actually hit above the radar well enough because it's it hit right after Rapanathic, Pathfinder, Swords and Wizardry, and when everybody was really tired. <laughs> I also think it hit during that period when our covers weren't really that great, and – to make matters worse, we use the same cover for Cyclopean Deeps and Cyclopean Deeps too, and I, I think that would have benefited by a more, much more dynamic There's cover. There's a lot of inside reasons why that happened, and it's all going to change. The new stuff's going to be great. Oh yeah, our, our covers. We, we we were talking about the other night about I, I was bragging on uh, how you. I was bragged on you and Matt. As a matter of fact, I, I was absolutely throwing you guys bouquets of roses because um, we were talking about uh, printing and how I was saying how how our artwork has changed. Oh, yeah, that's right, because we were showing the Syragos cover and how great that was. And, yep. and I explained that that Bill Webb came from a time when art didn't really matter because he, he he was a big fan of Judges Guild stuff. Judges Guild art is, at the best of times, looks like an amateur did it. The worst of times looks like a three-year-old in you know with a crayon. Look at that hired me. 
And 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 so Bill never he never bought anything because the cover looked pretty or the artwork is good. He always bought it because it was great. But we have a totally oh, different. Now. And Zach and I would always talk about this. We have our sensibilities now are so different because a cover will sell you. And and Bill is just from the old school that you know. Oh, it doesn't. You know, they really care about how it's written. Well, but you got to get them in the room, right? I mean, you can't have the best restaurant in town with you know the wor- the worst. Um, uh, door that door can't be you know covered with fly specks and you know bird poop, you know, and, be, and that's the same thing with our art. And our artwork has improved immensely. And Casey is also responsible. But if you look at the covers for our Indiegogos and the interior art now, um, it is is really really something. And no, especially, I, I think the Swords and Wizardry stuff uh, by Syragos is great. Where do you see the screen? Okay, that it's a half height screen, so okay, but it folds out four four panel fold out landscape. Right, so it's not tall, but it's wide. It has all the swords and wizardry stuff you'd want, like we used to have in the old screen that was good-ish. Um, this one's great, right? It has it all, but it has a single piece of art that goes across the whole front cover. That actually, really, it, uh, it's Michael Sergos did it. We paid for it because it's thirty-eight inches by six inches. I mean, about how many inches to get the wrap around? I have to watch it like how boring it can become. Wrap around the outside with the wrap on. <laughs> um, but uh, you have to actually pay a lot of attention to the sizes. And you realize when you want to do something like a screen, big art's expensive. Art's expensive. I mean, because you black and white art costs as much as color art, first of all, right? So, but we wanted to make sure the source was black and white, but it had a color pattern. But, you know, a lot of things are different the interiors. But by the time you get to making the kind of art we're looking at, it's expensive, but it's absolutely worth it. Because that's what differentiates a, a publisher like in our size. And we want to be better and better. I mean, we're looking at trying to make sure we're matching the art of people above us, right? And we're, we're getting there. We're close. And it, it's a, a huge challenge just to be able to find the time of the artists who are talented and can follow through. And the guy who can actually go through and read it. I challenge anybody. Pick up a book and decide what you want on the cover. And then once you decide that, think, well, where's the text going to go? Right? How do you make sure this cover works with the front text? How do you make sure it's going to work so it will, it will actually pop once you have a title? And how long is the title? How many words is that? How big do you make the text? Where are you going to put the author's name? Where are you going to put this? Where are you going to put that? Think about that. That's what an art director does. And without that, we're back to like uh, the City of Brass that was done back in 2008 in Necromancer. The actual title, title characters covered uh, the actual art. Because that's how little they care after the, after the point, right? <laughs> no, but it, it, it becomes, you can't do much about it if you haven't thought about it in the beginning, right? So art direction, right? Is, right. But, and that's even but like someone says, layouts are pain in the ass. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> that's understatement that I love. See, that's the kind of understatement that I'm, I'm really into. No, layout is a pain in the ass. Why is it a pain in the ass? Because you are taking elements that cross the board that if you haven't had professionals actually think about it for each page, you're never going to get what you want, right? And like, I, I've done it. Dude, this is what makes me unique, right? I did it all. I know I'm not good at any of it, and so therefore I do this. <laughs> I got kicked upstairs because I've done each piece, and like I haven't got nominated for any award for layout, and I would never do layout now. There's not a chance. There's no. The last thing I did for us was like some. <clears throat> now I won't even say. <laughs> I did the map work, but that was all in Photoshop, right? I love InDesign. I find it fascinating and cool. I do not have the talent. The people we have doing like Chuck and Susie um, doing this and Rich Oliver does our POD stuff. Um, we have three people. That's how we have three people. Um, they work almost full time um, and they do an amazing job and they do it fast and they do it reliably. So, yeah, it's a giant pain in the ass. But to make sure they can do their job well, it's a giant pain in the ass, too, because somebody I won't name names. Has to go through and make sure everybody else on the way up to the layout process does all their parts correctly. And some of the stuff I have to judge, I got to trust so many people to do it right because, okay, we do conversions. Okay, well, um, I know Pathfinder 1, not at all, not one bit. <laughs> and to trust the people who've done the work, and uh, Michael Mars Russell did a lot of the, our work for Pathfinder 1 stuff. He did a great job, right? But I have to trust that he's done that part of it. So when we do the Pathfinder version, we know that it's still in line with how the, the whole module is going, but is not an exact replica because you can't make a module – for three games and it be the same it has to be the same theme in the same spirit but built for the game itself or you're just selling a knockoff right 
And so we work really hard at that. And I think I'm really proud of Frog Out Necromancer because we've really upped that. Because as a matter of fact, I should, I'm probably going to talk stuff I shouldn't say, but I feel like I'm talking to you guys like I'm like on Facebook or something. <laughs> it's just us. No, nobody's, nobody's watching the show. All right, nobody's well, watching me. Yeah. Okay. We're considering making all the Swords and Wizardry, um, like Indiegogo's the size of uh, the Swords and Wizardry box set, so you can put the modules inside the box and haul around with you like you're taking, taking your bike and head to school, right? No, but Ooh. so to differentiate the size and actually pare down the information that's provided because it would be matching a much more um, Swords and Wizardry type adventure. Now, I would still have the words from the author that are important, right? But it would be reworked in such a way that it would be designed for that kind of format. So then you can put it in a box set and you can play Swords and Wizardry with that, like boom on the table, have a map that folds out, like a full page in the back, and then you can play it quick and easy. And it's just like playing a white box game, right? Whereas you can get the same adventure, but it has all the extras you expect in a 5e version to make it run well in 5e and then have it in a layout and a format that makes you feel you know comfortable like you're playing a 5e game. Yet you both fought a Kraken, right? But right. fundamentally, you, you fought them and got to that point through the different ways that makes each of those versions of the game shine. I play both, Swords of Wizardry and 5e. I'm a Swords of Wizardry guy because I'm old. But I like 5e very much. I like a lot of the things about it a great deal. We can't lose the elements of what makes 5e great while trying to – we're not trying to shoehorn it, right? And so that's the part of the process that makes it hard. And so I'm incredibly proud of the stuff we're putting out, but it is – you told me, Mike Bellotto, I blame you. Like, this is all really your fault. Because oh, I'm in the one. Well, look at me. Mm. Yeah, I was my own visit to, at, to, at, to, sorry, to, at Game Con one year. Mike Bellotto, I drove up when I was still a small press guy. I mean, I was still selling these, man. I was still selling these. Someone on the back of his Chevy. Yeah. Yeah, pretty That's much. Nice. And then we're there. And then next thing I know, uh, Bill Webb, I want to buy your company because Mike Bellotto talked me up. It's your fault. This is hard. This is hard. Yeah, it's a troll that's it, it's the troll that keeps on giving for me. It's great. No, it should because you know what? Honestly, it, it's given hopefully to everybody because <laughs> um, the, I'm lucky. I, I'm extraordinarily lucky because I'm one of the few people I know that does outside of the Wizards of the Coast and some people at Paizo that uh, actually are able to do this full time. And Matt and I do, do do this literally do it full time. And um, it's uh, it's a gift, but I want to be grateful because of, because it's such a gift that I'm able to uh, make sure the stuff that we uh, make available for our fans and for our customers and for anybody who loves the game. Like if, if a player plays in one of our games, doesn't know who we are, and never knows who we are afterwards, I hope that the work I've been able to do to get that there is worth it for them because I love role playing games. I've loved role playing games since 1981, and that now to you two old farts, that may sound like a just. I just showed up, man. Just because just because Earl Otis set was my first set doesn't make me oh, a young. Oh, 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 wait, wait, wait! Old fart. Listen, I know Mike's the old the old grognard in the room. I, I'm only fifty three. Okay, oh, yeah. I, I'm, probably, I'm really I, I probably I probably started I remember, hating 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 I can't remember. <laughs> you know, but I'm, I I'm, started I'm around 80, 80, yeah. 80. Well, My wife will tell oh. me how old I am in the chat here in a second because I never remember. Mm. <laughs> Well, if you were born in seventy-four, your birthday I was is, born the same year. Oh my as God! You were a child. All right, I was yeah, born the same right. year as Dungeons and Dragons. That's how I remember. Wow, I am right. a grandpa. So, okay. No. Well, so so um, we focused on you a lot, Zach, because that's just how your ego rolls. Um, that's right. Well, let's talk about Total Con a little bit. Um, so I, I I was think trying to think how this worked out there. Now, I remember the year you quote unquote. Finally got back into conventions. I remember you came to North Texas, and and that early that year you had gone to Gary Con. What's the first Total Con you went to? I went to that- Total Con twenty twelve, and I went because I had decided to make Whisper and Venom, and I was going to go to old school cons. And this is your fault too. Now it I think is. About it. we used to go to a chat on the ACM or KM every Friday night. We had a chat. And I met you because I bought a a Lost Caverns from you. Because you're laughing about that guy Kubernard. He was there. <laughs> he oh no, Googie. Anyway, yeah. no, I met you and I'm like, what are the old school cons are there? Because Gary Con North Texas, because you had already convinced me to go to North Texas, and that also was your fault. Mm. Um, damn, you know, as long as it is your fault now, I think about wow. it. Wow, this is the troll. <laughs> this is, I tell no, you, this is- I went in 2013 and it was or 2012 and it was great. It was, I, before I launched my Whisper and Venom um, Kickstarter, and I actually 
I was, the only person I really knew there was Michael Curtis. I was in a game with the case, the missing magic with Frank. And I was in a game with Tim cast, which we eventually became the snake riders of Aaron Dondo, which is still to this day, a classic cause he still runs it. Wow. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. Cause, cause I, well, again, I told the story last night to Angelia about how when uh, Doug and I were looking for schools or cons that had an old school track in 2009, there was none. I looked everywhere. I mean, except for Gen Con and Dragon Con, nothing except for Total Con, which had games by Frank Mincer. That was it. Because back then, you could not find a convention that wasn't all 3.0, 3.5. You know, I mean, no, that, that was it. That was that was the big I game. To, I was supposed to meet uh, Matt Solarts there, and he didn't show, right? But I hung out with Michael Curtis, and I did the old school stuff. And so, no, and it was great. And Total Con was the coolest con ever when I went there. And no offense, North <clears throat> But what they did better than anybody, I mean, anybody, was had families, board games, and role-playing games in a way that was so comfortable and so cool. And they had cool seminars and everything. And what I distinctly like about it still the best is nobody runs a con that is that big that feels like a family con um, yet that I've been to. Because like North Carolina, right. like, it feels like a high school. Like uh, we all got together in high school to play. These are all the guys I would have played with in high well, school. North Texas play. is only five hundred people too. I mean, yeah, that they have three times as many people as we do at Total Con. So yeah, being be able so, to do that is amazing. That's I've never met play. anybody there that was any, that was anything but nice to me. Like the one, the coolest. No offense to my boss here, ready. The coolest old school designer that I met was there was Mike Pondsmith. He was amazing. Now he's, he's probably so rich awesome. and famous that he won't talk to me, but yeah. he was awesome. Actually, he will. He's really cool. <laughs> but um, like, and I met um. That's the first time I met uh, uh. So I met Alan Hammock. I first time I was in a game with Frank, and then I was in. At, but everybody is awesome. You, you, so, it's, it's, you, you you lost your virginity at that con too. No, right? oh. no, okay. I, I still have it. You know? <laughs> oh, ouch! Oh, shit. Ow. Oh, oh well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> actually, actually, thumbs up, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Kim George, you look amazing with 75, Michael. Yes, you do. I do. Well, because you know, Kim's Kim's my baby. So you know Kim's awesome. Thank you. Yes, she is. She's all she's the best. No, um, it, you know what? I, I will say this. Tolcon doesn't have Kim. And when we go to the Tolcon, she's not there. So that that's one suck. thing against it. But it's got all those other idiots in the East Coast. I, I guess Ian shows up. No, and, Ian, Ian shows and, up. And, and was there. Rocky and all those guys. Yeah. Right? You know, last time I was there. Ten, ten car and all yeah, those. Ten other. car was there. Yeah. yeah. No, but you know what? There are a lot of people like I first met there. Uh, Jay Parker, I met there, um, and uh, it just was it was awesome. I have a cereal box in my office um, that is from Tolcon. I have a good, I have great memories. I'm I'm the, that's the last actual con I went to pre COVID. Right, um, and you was, and me both. Yeah, no, and you you actually got ill at that con, Eric. And I was actually worried. I remember that. Uh, listen, uh, I'll be honest with you. Uh, the best thing that happened to me was getting ill because getting ill, coming down with the upper respiratory, which led to pneumonia and sepsis, was kicked off the congestive heart failure. Uh, as my as my specialist told me, that's the best thing that could have happened to you because you already had the damage due to radiation and chemo. And if we didn't know about it, if your body was compensating, you just probably wouldn't have woken up one morning. Well, Angelina, so now I'm here to annoy you. Know, or 10 cars ass right in the hospital. And, you know, you're the queen <laughs> in your own life, I tell you what. You, you'll even catch life saving pneumonia at Total Con. That's how great it is. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, listen, it worked out perfect for me. And I'll be honest with you, I had a, I had a great time. Uh, I ran, I was just run two games. I ran a game with a full table, and then I ran, well, I didn't run. I, I had a, my second table had one player show up because. It was Saturday night, and we all know what happens on Saturday night at the convention. Everybody gets to the, I'm tired, I'm, I'm done, I've booked everything already. So, so we went, we, uh, <laughs> we moved it to the bar, which I think is always the best place to run a game anyway, but just me. No, uh, we went to Tolkien, and Bill didn't originally initially want to go because it's so far for him because he lives in Washington State. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a long that's way, a Boston, and he, and he hates to fly, right? We went there. We were there two hours. He's like, this con is just great. I want to go all in. I'm going to go all in. And like, well, everything he does, when he decides he likes it, we'll go all in, right? And it's been kind of rough because as a company that works remotely um, most of the time, we're so used to seeing a bunch of us at cons, et cetera, and not going to cons this last year and this year. Um, you makes you realize how, what an yeah. integral part of the experience as being a professional in the hobby is. Um, and you know, it, I hate to say this, and I, everybody should smack me for even saying, but 
it got to be a, a drag, man. I was going to con a month. And I was dragging this loser with me the below me. The <laughs> yeah, well, I would say the year so 2019, um, I went to Gary Con, Game Hole Con, North Texas, Reaper Con, uh, Long Con. Uh, there I think there's one more missing in there. You went yeah, to yeah. all those so plus, was a game, game, yeah. I went to all those plus more. Plus total con. Plus total con and plus, plus crit hit con and Phoenix and crit hit uh, con and Phoenix, yeah. And, and, and uh, we, yeah. We were dragging. By the end of the year, Game Hole Con, we were dragging, Zach. I mean, you remember that? We were just like, man, we were tired. I no, mean, that's we, the most cons I think we'd both of us had ever been to yeah, in our entire and, lives in one year. Yeah, you know, and the thing is, that I kept telling you, he's like, you know, they're paying us to do this, right? And you're like, yeah. He goes, we're we're assholes. <laughs> we're assholes for bitching. I, and I was telling you in the car, I'm like, you know, we're bitching because of the carry books we're selling because they're paying us to do it to go to gaming conventions. <laughs> gaming conventions. And you're like, I know, but we're tired. I'm like, well, I was, I was, I was tired too. <laughs> well, see, I've been rested because the, I remember the next year, by the time Total Con came around, I was really jealous about not going because we that's about when we decided that, okay, only some people are going to go to some cons. We're like, you know what? You, you're not going to go to Total Con because it's all on the East Coast, but but we'll go to Gary Con because we were going to go to Gary Con. Remember Snow Con that year too? And you, you vowed never to go to the East oh, Coast. Oh, Snow Con. With the Snow Con that year too? Yeah. So the year oh started off with Snow Con in 2019. Oh my gosh. That's the first time I flew in 21 years too. And I probably will be another twenty one years before I fly again. But yeah. um no, but but yeah, you know, and so, anxiety and action, I'll tell that story later. <laughs> I was already to you know, I was ready by to 2020. I was like, man, I'm kind of back in the groove again because you guys were having so much fun at Total Con. No, Total Con and, and, then, and then literally what two weeks after Total Con's when Armageddon hit and um and Gary Con was really canceled and then it just cascaded from there. Everybody was canceled. We were like a week out from Gary Con when they finally canceled Gary Con from actually happening, and like we were gonna go. Uh it yeah. was me and Matt were gonna go. Um, well, but, first of all, you, Matt, me, and someone else were gonna go, and then I, then we decided, well, Mike might get sick, and I guess, or I decided that, so Mike's not gonna go because Corona might be worse than we thought. And who was the third, fourth person? Was it your wife? Somebody else was gonna go. So I see most of yeah, yeah. And then we decided, okay, we don't need that many people. There are only two, and then at that point. It, the whole con was canceled, so it was like, okay, yeah. well, I guess everybody's staying home. And then, so yeah, then we had the year without cons, pretty well. Although we did have North Texas, which we only had eighty people attend, but which which was by design because we told people not to show up if if they were yeah. traveling or older. Um, no, but yeah, there was just no, no, no cons. No, As a no. company, we're not going to North Texas. I'm going to North Texas. Jen's going to North Texas. I have, I bet Matt winds up going to North Texas. I haven't asked him yet, but I mean, we're individually we're going to be going. Um, Jerry's going because we we told oh, Jerry. Oh, Jerry, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he, he got inoculated. <laughs> Just well, yeah, well, yeah that, we, we, we were go. hoping we were hoping that most of the older people by by North Texas will be inoculated, yeah. and, and most so, like, of us I've talked to are getting inoculated, which is great. As a company, we we can't justify it because it, we don't know how many people would be there. We don't know how safe it is for people who work with us. So we have an obligation. I mean, this is where you know it's all fun and games in the gaming industry until something serious happens, right? But we have an obligation to our people and our fans too. I mean, what if what if I got sick? Right. And I showed up to do an event. Oh, yeah. My wife reminds me, I'm on staff for North Texas. So I have no excuse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's an inside joke, too. So, no, it's not an inside joke. It's, it's, it's an outside joke, but inside inside and outside joke. But, uh, you, make outside? Yeah. Yeah. you make her dress in like skippy outfits and do like. I don't make your wife do anything. If you think I, you might make your wife do anything, you're you're on crack. I don't really think uh, so. You, you know, you know your, your wife decides <laughs> what she wants to do, and she pretty much tells me what I'm doing. So. Um, that you know enough. So yeah, I, I didn't. I did not call her up one day and say, you know, I really think I'd like to see you in a Skippy Devlet costume. I, no, that never happened. What happened was she told me that she and Jen Green were going to show up in Devlet costumes. I'm like, oh, okay, sounds you great, get, man. You want to guess why? <laughs> oh dear, is this some kinky sex game that I don't want to know about no. or no? Okay, no, as a not. She watched the disorganized way we ran it the year before, and that was too much for her. <laughs> <laughs> Her OCD kicked in. She's like, "What is that Satan guy? He doesn't know what he's doing. He's just no. right all over the place." No, it totally kicked in because, like, you're looking around for the next thing to auction. <laughs> well, that is true. Yes, yeah. the devilettes are extremely helpful, though. They they and probably oh, yeah. probably will be more helpful the older I get too. <laughs> and I really start forgetting stuff. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm be like like the Stanley of uh, 
of conventions. I'll make appearance, you know, five minutes into the movie, and then you won't see me again. <laughs> so that'll be I'll come in, come on stage as Satan, and then wave, and then I'll go off to my old folks' home. But, but no, we, we'll, but, we'll wheel you back. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we're, we're we're planning on having the con this year because um, we're very lucky this year, and that and that's I was talking to Angelina last last night. They they kind of hit both ends of the spectrum because. They were able to have the last big convention of the year last year because it was right before COVID really hit. And yeah. unfortunately, this year, the vaccinations were not quite out enough in time for enough people to be vaccinated for them to do Total Con this year. So oh. that they kind of, whereas, you know, like Gary Con got, got shafted two years in a row because they, they got at the very beginning of the cycle last year and they're hitting at the very end of the cycle this year. But uh, Texas, we're, we're going to be okay because we've, we've already heard from people like Steve Marsh, inoculated. Um, Alan Hammock uh, is getting his shot. I mean, all these guys we've talked to are getting shots. Uh, so uh, we're, we're really excited about uh, the fact that most of the people who are, yes, Mr. Hammock, yes. Yes, calling Mr. Hammock. Um, so that, that it's going to work out. A lot of our our special guests are, the, are ironically, the ones first in line for um, the vaccines. So uh, we're figuring in next, well, we have three more months. Uh, three more months, we should have quite a few more vaccinations by then. And we, yeah. every year we're hearing from people saying, hey, I got my second va va uh, vaccination. I'm ready to go now. So, oh, awesome. Now, if, now if only if Doug and I can get our vaccinations, we haven't got ours yet, but I, I'm uh -oh. I'm sure we will in the next uh, month or so. Okay. So, yeah, we, we've really benefited by that. And I think most conventions are going to be after June are going to benefit by that. And I, we're, we're and we're scheduled to go to Game Hall this year. I think we'll be okay by Game Hall. I really do. I, I know Alex was real worried about that last year, but it looks like it's going to work out perfectly this year. I think um, there's a good chance that Alex will be the first first really viable larger con that goes. Yeah. I bet it's a third of the size by intent. I don't know. I haven't talked to Alex except for to laugh about you. Um, not you, Eric. You no, I didn't, I didn't think it was me. Uh, <laughs> already no, got but, uh, I already got an hour argue with Alex well, today well, online. So I worry. <laughs> I, 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 I worry for as an industry wide thing. Well, I don't always worry. Sometimes I'm kind of vaguely happy. But Gen Con, right? Gen Con is in a position that's bad because they the amount of money it takes to throw something like that, and you don't know how many people might actually go. You have a dire government organization that helps you throw a con in a large city. That isn't the same thing as, hey, man, we're going to have a con this weekend for like 1,500 people, which is sure. hard, but right. the scale <laughs> is insane. And I worry that Gen Con won't be able to recover what it was as a like mecca. Oh, but I don't, I don't, yeah. but in some anymore. ways, I'm not that sorry because I think there's a lot of advantage. <laughs> no, hold on. I, I can be snarky, yes, too, but no. I think there's advantages to having regional cons and local cons that people feel comfortable at that also you'll see – a mix of, you know, Gen Con does not benefit from a mix of virtual and and, uh, and no, attendees no, in person, no, right? Yeah, right. They don't. Whereas I think smaller cons do. And there's a real advantage to building face-to-face -face communities in our industry that we've done surprisingly well virtually that we have a lot of the problems that you saw really loudly, I think, in our industry with, you know, well, you're an asshole. No, I hate you. I'm a tweet about you now. And oh, Eric Tenkar, you know him. Oh God, I'm. I don't really. It's know worse. Him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I'm. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm. Listen, I'm a. I'm a horror. I'm a horror. I tell you. No, I heard. No, but that goes away when you meet people. Sure. Right. You meet them virtually, or you meet them in person. Yep. And I think that what this has done for smaller and regional cons is going to be big because they're learning now the tools to make. Like Tolcon's done a great job on this it, because they've been able to build off. Because Gary Khan's job, eh, he, 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 it was interesting because it was the first, right? That's and right. so being able to build on that, we all kind of know. So I think having regional local cons or company-wide stuff, like Frog God has Frog, Frog we don't call them like Frog Game Day. And it's actually more than one day. But uh, we get together and we run with our four other fans are welcome to come and join for an expensive price. They get a module and they all come. But these things bring us together in ways we didn't know how to do so. We'd go to cons. And we'd see the same people at every con that we love, like Kim George, for example. She's the, you know, she's the queen of con going women. It's true. Um, but we also don't get the chance to see. She could, you can now because because uh, you can go because they have it virtually. See, no, but uh, honestly, we, we're better as gamers because of this miserable mess we've all been stuck through. Because it's taken people like, oh, I have a name at random. Uh, we'll call him Bill. Okay, we'll call him Bill. And Bill, it was a uh, typical. Uh, well, I don't know, a designer in his 50s, let's just say, we're gonna, but Bill learned how to use Zoom, which would have been impossible 
I mean, mm -hmm. impossible <laughs> in the past. And Discord. I mean, there are tools that are going to let us be better community. And it's all because of what happened with COVID. Now, terrible it happened. But it, the fact that it did happen is we're going to take the best swings from it. And that's the only thing you can do with horrible situations is take the best. So I do well, think well, cons are coming, but yeah. Well, well, this is something Eric and I talk about a lot on our show. Now, you wouldn't know that because you never listened to our show. <clears> but if, if, you, if you did. Green. Green, you did. Oh yeah, we need to talk about that too. About how you tried to poach our day Wednesday night with your GDZ garbage. You know, and then and then you know, I'm the, not in charge of that show. I'm just a namesake. Just well, so you know, I shame Skeeter. Talk to him. I shame Skeeter to moving to Monday. So that, you there know, you go. I, I picked that day. <laughs> <laughs> well, he said he did. That's weird. You don't uh, have no. to shame. <laughs> now, Eric and I talk a lot about the the shape of cons post COVID, and that's something we talk about a lot. Is when. Are people going to feel safe about the giant gangbang that is uh, whoa, Gen whoa, Con whoa, or, whoa, whoa, whoa. or Drag? I'm talking about cons, Dragon Con or, or Gen Con, or, you know, Anim or Acon or any of those big con uh, San Diego Comic Con. And and you know, honestly, like you were saying, Zach, I think those days may be done because I I don't think a lot of um, 60 year older special guest types are ever going to really feel safe in a giant crowd like that because we always had con crud, right? You know, it's just something, oh, I'm sick after the con. You just kind of, everybody kind of joke about it. You had a sore throat and a kind of a mild cold. Cold every once in a while, you might catch, like Eric, you know, right. you catch pneumonia, you get really sick, catch the flu. <laughs> but, you know, there's nothing like catching something that's going to kill you. Uh, so I, I think that this is this is going to change the fundamental way we do cons. I, I mean, it's not like Gen Con's going to wake up this year and go, you know what? We're not going to social distance anymore. No masks, no nothing. Just all cram them in there like we did before. They're, it's going to be a while before they're able to even try something like that ever again, if they're even going to ever try that again. There's a lot at stake. I, I think that that's true and not true at the same time. I think that it's true that it's a big risk, but I think that if you're, those will call you Peter, okay? We're not going to name you a name. We're going to name okay. somebody possibly named Peter. Random and guy. You know, yeah. We'll call it. Summer con, <laughs> um, you have a lot, you have a reason to not believe that and to try to make it as safe as possible for everybody because you're, it's an industry, right? In itself. I mean, oh, yeah. I dream of the day that one month of Gen Con's <laughs> effing income that or expenses <laughs> is my entire company's take, right? So we're talking big players like Dragon Con's the same way. And at least at Dragon Con, I guess you're wearing an outfit sometimes that. They, they don't look like they're very COVID safe, though. Um, I actually met a woman from Dragon Con, and she's like one of the nicest people I've ever met. I'm like, you represent your con very badly because you aren't what I see. <laughs> but no, but the fact that you're right, um, I do think that they're going to try. But, but how, how do you do that? How do you get your fans? How do you make your fans buy into that? They're like, no, 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 no. It, it, that that was that was two years ago. You're not going to die anymore. Everything's great. Just we're going to cram you in there well, again. You know, I think, I it, think that's outside of their control. What? But you know, part of what? Listen, even Totalcon, we discussed yesterday. Totalcon's plans going forward is likely going to be a hybrid. It's going to be we're going to have a physical con presence, but we've also learned that there are people that like the virtual aspect. That people that you know, and they have picked up people playing virtually from across the country that they wouldn't have gotten physically. Now, does that mean, that, uh, listen, just like me going from blogging to podcasting to doing live streams, some of your audience transfers over, some of it doesn't. Some of it stays where it was, and maybe some of it you, you lose because they feel you're not concentrating enough on them. But I, I think that all these things can be part of the new future. Listen, work from home. We've been doing that for years to a limited extent, but now because of COVID, Manhattan is, is literally half the office space in Manhattan is empty. It's because, and it's, and it's, it's, well, it, it's damn near damn near close to it. And the thing is, companies are reevaluating, saying, "How much office space do we really need? Sure. Maybe we only need to bring in NASDAQ? one third of the staff." Wasn't the Nasdaq or something thinking of moving to Florida? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, yeah. Well, a, a part of it, the part of the reason for those moves they're talking about, <clears throat> is because I think one of them had their servers in New Jersey, so Jersey decides, well, we're going to tax your tax every transaction because your servers in, are in New Jersey. And they're like, all right, we'll just move our servers to Florida. You know, because a lot of it is the, is the tax but, but, issue, and and that, that's part of the problem with this whole, you know, remote work is now it's like, well, where do you get who taxes your income? Well, if you live in New Jersey, but your job is in New York, but no longer physically in New York, 
You're telecommuting into New York. Who get who gets the tax money? I'm gonna tell you what they try to do. <laughs> well, yeah, I'd like to hear it, sir. No, well, you, no, that you're gonna see. I, I think we have all three lived, thankfully, lived. Yes. Especially you, Eric. Yep. Thanks for living through a time where we have a fundamental shift in our country and our all you know. I mean, I, what am I concentrating on? Hobbies, right? I don't have any kids, right. but you know what? Schools are different. They'll never be the same again. Oh my God! Yeah, I took my. We had our niece on uh, the other week for Gamers Health, and she was talking about the changes and being in a force, you know, three sided box, basically at her desk, and uh, they have lunch in pods. Like you go to lunch with the same three students, so you're limited to who you're exposed to. No, and uh, and people like opt out. I mean. Homeschooling was a thing, but it was a thing you had to really commit to and you had all kinds of baggage associated with it and all kinds of mm -hmm. stuff, right? I don't think people look at it that way anymore as much. And I think that no. that's going to fundamentally shift. And so what happens when, okay, I'm paying taxes for school I don't use? People aren't going to like to do that as much. I mean, so the, what will change? I don't know. But what I do know is that that has changed that. It's changed our hobby, changed conventions, yeah. changed our country. I mean, everything is different. We've lived through it now. And it's interesting times as the Chinese curse would say, right? Well, oh, my, yeah. my daughter, our two youngest, uh, my two young uh, grandchildren are being homeschooled because of um, issues with the school, and they've done great, and they've done so great that um, they're sp they have a chance to go back to school uh, for the spring semester. They're not going to go back. Uh, so they've been out. They have been out of school almost over a year now. Um, it's been great for my uh, grandson because he had a, he had a lot of trouble with online learning. Uh, he's 10 years old, just hard for him to keep attention. It's really hard for any kid that age to – I don't think I could have done it when I was 8 or 10 years old, sit in front of a computer screen for you know five or six hours. Um, but, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right, Zach, because it, it changes the whole paradigm of, you know, well, is, is this the best way to do things? Is, is in-person learning the best thing for everybody, or is it good for some people and not good for other people? And should we keep doing it the exact same way? The same thing with we'll cons. Circle it back with cons. Exactly. Circle it yeah, back should, with cons. Is yeah. this the best way? Are we doing cons the best way? And I, I think we may have reached the apex of having the con just the the 65,000 you know person or when you come to you know San Diego Comic Con the 100,000 people crammed into this p place shoulder to shoulder uh, absolutely jam packed in there. We may have reached the apex of that, and we may be taking a step back at this point. So you know what? Well, maybe that's not the best way to do cons. Maybe, well, I think maybe you're actually right too. I think you're right about guests. I mean, you, you don't have to be you know 75 years old and like Bill Webb, right? You, <laughs> no, you, you don't have to be a celebrity. You could be a Marvel movie star in the best shape of your life, right? Do you sure. want to go in for a place with 65,000 people and wind up because you can't avoid touching them? You so right. I mean, even if you try to not. Surfaces, food, something, right? If you're afraid of, you know, getting sick, because, I mean, you can't afford to get sick if your job's acting, right? And you make a lot of money and your brand is worth something. You're not going to risk it over a $5,000 appearance fee. And, and not only that, but th think about yeah. what, think about how these cons, let's, let's, let's pick on San Diego Comic Con a little bit too. Think about how they get people in there. Why do they get people in there? Because you can see the entire cast of uh, American Horror Story or, uh, Marvel comic movies. If they start appearing on video, and yeah, we got the latest, uh, everybody for the latest Doctor Strange movie, and they're all on video. Nobody's going to come and see that. No, they no, want to go to the but con. They can to have see a virtual that. con so you can. Right. right? So you can but, but, have these events so they can be with people, and you, they may not get the appearance fee or may not be quite the same, but you'll have people who will be willing to pay to do that, and you'll find businesses that will grow. I think that honestly, uh, this is the total. This is big to total con, honestly. This is to them and to you guys at North Texas first, because that's the first time I saw in person and online play at the same time. And I think that that's going to grow next year. With the like total con went from a completely in person to completely mm -hmm. online, and they did it really well. Yeah. And that's going to show other people that you know this is possible. And you know what I love about this is that, well, I'll pick a guy's name. I'll just uh, randomly Heath. We'll call him Heath. Um, he Would he be from, like, to say, Australia or somewhere? Well, it, I mean, all I, all I want to say is that oh. it's a place where animals will either kill you or stick you in their pouch. <laughs> so Australia <laughs> or thereabouts. Yeah, yeah. That's around there. Oh, right. okay. Uh, no, but I know him now, and I've met him because of, you know, online stuff like Facebook stuff, but I can play games with him now. Like, I don't play games that often, but if I go to a con and play games, I can play games with guys that I know and like, like Heath. Sure. And I had a guy in my game, Whisper and Venom, and he was from New Zealand. 
And um, he, I'd never played it. Didn't, it wasn't even a customer frog by games. He just saw we had a game day. He wanted to play a game and sign up for mine. I paid. I was like, whoa, really? Wow. Um, Cause I wouldn't pay to play him. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, I, he was great. And I would never have the interaction and having this be, uh, you're having this be a both ways to do it. You are able to um, just meet people that you want to meet. Cause I, one of the things I always say about gaming is one of the reason I, I'm glad I'm in it professionally, but why I made whisper and venom, why I came back into it after 20 years of not doing it. These are all the friends I always should have had. I want more of them. Right. <laughs> you know? You're always limited by geographical uh, considerations, right? Well, now even, now, now you're not, now you're not at all. You're not at all. And not only that, you're able to find people through people. Like I know that if somebody who's aware of Eric's blog and you know would comment on it and read it and had watches his streams or knows who he is, and you come somebody that I like, hey man, we work with Swords and Wizards. You like that? You know, and it's like we used to have a contact. I'm not trying to sell them anything. It's like we have an instant way to touch base because we have it's such much easier to find the people who share your interests. And yeah. it, and but then that core group can grow. In ways that makes it better. Are we better off with Kiwis in our groups? Yes, we are. Are we better off with people from like, you know, from all walks, right? Like we met through Eric's. She, she came to Eric's Discord. When was Alex Alex Peng came to Eric's Discord, and then wound up being at one of our frog chats. And we right. hired with an author for um, Moon Daughter's Fate, which was effing phenomenal. And it was really different from anything we would have done. We have never would have tried it, except she was Chinese American and really believed in doing Chinese American st- adventure that really believed in the, the legends and in the lore and really took it seriously. We would never have attempted it for lots of reasons, primarily because none of us are Chinese. Yeah. That's <laughs> um, a tough one. That's tough. Yes. You know, you know what I'm saying? But it, but we met her through Eric's discord and then onto our discord or blog. And we meet better people because you just have communities that if they're, if they're good people and they have a good time and they have the right attitude, you get to meet people that you can actually want to be around. And that's what we're doing here. And that's what TotalCon is doing so well. Is a transition from all off to all on that you know the next one's going to be a mix. Well, so we you also, still have Heath at a kind of <laughs> Mike can show up to Tolkien still. Well, we also talk, Eric and I talk about a lot though, is that one of the things you miss about cons though is the fact that you know you don't get to go to a dealer room, you don't get to go, you know, those hey, we, we all had a, a game, let's all go to dinner and get something to eat, and you share stories and you have a great time. And that's the one thing that I think people are jonesing about because, uh, uh the um, something I talked about with Angelina and her husband last night was the fact that uh, we're kind of hitting online con fatigue right now for, for online only cons. And I'm not saying when, if they're part of another con, it's going to be different, but right now I think, uh, I think we're definitely hitting online con fatigue. I, I talked to Alex last year about to, uh, uh, game hole con and they had a pretty good amount of people. They, I think they, they want to say they had about 1500 people for their online con, but um, Alex said he, he wouldn't do that again. He said, I, he said, if this, if we have to do this again, I, I'm just not going to have a con. And I was like, why? He goes, because I like doing cons in person. I said, I'm abs- I absolutely agree with you. Is it because the, you're missing a big element of a con by not doing it in person? I'm going to agree with you because I like to. <laughs> <laughs> of course, well, you I was in I was in Alyssa Faden's uh, stream last night, and she said she wanted to make it like we're hanging out at a con, just talking. So she was working on a map, and she was talking about how maps are made, just general BS back and forth in small rooms. I think that we're going to find ways to recreate what it is you're missing. And I agree with you. That is what's missing is the people aren't used to still going discord and going to where there's a chat or a general area and just hanging out. But there's a, like there's a new service called clubhouse. I think it's a social media service and it's all audio only, right? People are starting to learn how to go into rooms and just talk again. And when you find a way that you can implement that, um, you can do it. And I know that you guys don't want to hear this because you're old, but, um, I VR um, will do the same kind of thing. You can you will find that we are going to find a way to be social the way we want to be, whether we can do it totally in person or not, because we want to do it. We want to recreate that, so oh, we will. We have we have to do it. Yeah, so, you know, exactly. it, it, it's a, But, but we're never going to be able to do. No, I disagree that we're never going to be able to do um, a dealer room though. You, the whole point of the dealer room is you go in. There's the book sitting there, and there's Jeff Delaney behind the counter, and Jeff Delaney can sit there as you're flipping through Astonishing Swords and Swords can talk to you about the game, can show you the T-shirts over here, and here's something over here. And I think that's one thing we haven't been able to do well yet. Now, I'm not saying we can't maybe do that better in the future, but we can't sure. do it well right no, you're now. You're absolutely correct. No, you're, I'm, now I have to agree with you. I hate that part. But no, you're absolutely correct. Right now, 
really not possible easily with unless you have very specialized people who want to see it done. But um, honestly, I talked to uh, Doug Davidson over at um, uh, Fancy, Fancy Grounds. At Fancy Grounds, one of the things that it's built to do is use VR, right? And I can assure you that I can set up a VR booth in the Unity space, and I can do it in about a day to where if you want to walk through and pick up something and look at it, and you can't flip through the pages yet, but that'll come. Mm -hmm. But you can pick up something and look at it, and, tell me, and we could talk about what you're visually talking about. We can have a transaction. I can ship it to your house in a week. Well, that's interesting now. That, but that's that's a that's that, more that, that, heavy reliance on VR. That's VR. Seven years away. Yeah. And it's got equipment involved, but you know, like, well, it costs money. Well, the computer we're on right now costs money too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, an Oculus Quest is two hundred bucks or three hundred bucks, and you put it on your head, and you can have that whole experience, including walking and meeting people. And I'm not saying it's for everybody. I'm not saying it's going to happen soon, but we will find a way to recreate this in ways that'll be useful. But I still think in-person cons won't go away because I'm in Arizona. And if I hear there's going to be an in-person con in Phoenix, it's going to be a size I'm comfortable with, say, a thousand people. I'm going to choose that first over. And I love virtual reality. That's my other hobby that I don't want to go talk about anymore. We, know about the, we already know about the porn, but yeah, go ahead. No, I wish. I was, I'm too tired. Um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, no, I, yeah, I understand. That's actually what I talked to Doug right about was the tilt five. Anyway, um, I just, there's a comment. Um, no, but um, yeah. I do think that I, even with all the tools, you know, I love VR and I love sitting there working with all the different aspects, but I will drive down to Phoenix first. It's 90 minutes away, but I will make that decision first and pay the $800 I'll spend between rooms, sure. food, games. Like I have saved so much money because of this convention is not happening. It is not big. I got paid to go. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, but, it's, but it's also, but we, but you, you get tired of that though, because we've been at home now for almost a year now. People are jonesing to get out of their house. That you know, just I, yeah, just anything. I mean, is there a, is there a dog park down there the street that I can walk to and look at somebody else's dogs? I'll do it. I just got to get out of here. I see this behavior in people. They're just they're just wanting to get out of the house, and I think that's that's why in person conventions will never be done because people are are wanting to wanting to leave the confines of their four walls they're tired of staring at. Uh, certainly, but they're going to be limited in size. Like you said, I mean, that's just part of the reality. And they're going to probably be a hybrid because if you leave behind the hybrid people, first off, they're potential congoers in the future, but they are also people that might shop at your virtual storefront. Sure. I think if, even if it isn't fully enabled, it's going to be there. I think if you're Gary Khan, you're Total Khan, you're Game Hall Khan, I think what you're going to see is you're going to have a premium. It's going to be a premium price to go in person. I think you're going to spend more money to get a ticket to go in person because more people are going to want to go than they're going to be comfortable actually offering it to. And so you're going to say, okay, we're going to offer a bit. Now, this is, people get mad because I've been, sorry, capitalism is what it is. Badges are $300. <laughs> bucks. Badges are $300 to go in person. They're $50 to go online or $20 or whatever they would come out to be. And we are going, it's a premium experience, but you know that they're going to make sure everybody there's safe and they have all the distancing they need as, as that goes. And that may change in two or three years. It may not, but the premium experience you're selling locally, right, is going to be one thing. And then you have a cheaper one online and then you may want to transition between them. But in order to maintain viability, you have to make so much money to get a space, right? Mm -hmm. So in order to make sure that you get there, the only way to make sure you have that money is raise the price. So you're making that a premium experience. And then you're offering the not the let's say, let's call this the Zach experience when you just show up online. <laughs> do you do you need uh, some kind of a bleach and drain cleaner for the Zach experience also? Or yeah, probably. <laughs> you might you might rabbit you might. But now the thing is, certain cons are certainly uh, a game hole could do that experience and and switch over to that. And it would run smooth as anything. And I'm not going to say which con or cons won't run as smoothly, but they are certainly out there. Um, it, it, it's going to be. Like I say, anything. I know which one you mean. <laughs> I mean, to, I mean to, Total Con, it runs very well. Total Con. Yeah, yeah Total Con. What, what are you laughing? What's so funny? I know what kind of talking about is not organized. Not I'm not going to say a damn word. Yeah. I just know from my personal experience as somebody who, if I was going to a convention, would be running games and the table for retail for Frog Guy Games. And I know the frustrations that I've gone through. And I, 
can only imagine if that was up to a premiere experience, what premiere would include. And I, I can't think of anything positive in, in, in this instance for Wait, what I'm it thinking about. The money it costs to run the con. Yes. Uh, I mean, it wouldn't change the experience, but it would cost more to do it in order to make it viable economically. That's my point. Uh, well, I, I still think that you're 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 just going to get those people that because I, I, I know I mean I'm just all I have as point of reference is is you know North North Texas and seeing that up close. And that demo and, is really young. And, but <laughs> Doug, Doug is a Doug and Alex. It's funny. Doug and Alex came are as as absolutely 100 percent different people. They are they're a lot the same in that they both do cons just because they love cons. They, they, they don't make money right. doing it, but they love oh, to yeah. do it. And they both have the same attitude. If I if I have to go 100 percent online i'm just not going to do it now, alex has said that and doug said that too because they want the whole con experience they remember going in there meeting people uh actually you know playing games sitting at down at a table rolling your own dice at the table going to the dealer room going to dinner afterwards they want that whole experience and so i i think you're right a hybrid works well because there's always going to be people and we talk to people nor you know that, that have, are not going to come back to North Texas here, and that, and you know, we uh, we're not going to blame anybody for not coming. We understand perfectly, and they and they right. want to apologize, and they say, you know, I'm just going to do online this year because I, I don't want to come in even with the vi you know, even with the vaccine, you, no problem at all. But I think as time goes on, we're going to see those people back slowly, uh, and, and I I don't know how many years we're talking, but I I, th I think at some point you're going to have the numbers almost as big as you had. You're always going to have a certain segment of people who don't feel safe or don't want to go or just, or just getting older. And, you know, when you're older, you, you know, like we were saying earlier, you can get sick from anything. It does, it's not just COVID. It's, no, it's, it's pneumonia. It's flu. It's con crud. It's food poisoning. I had food poisoning to con once. Uh, I mean, just all that stuff happens. And um, I, I just, I think, you guys are downplaying the experience of the of the con in person. Maybe it's because I'm older, and that's that's just the kind of con yeah, I've always been to. Yeah, or but that's my preference is that. But I we have to think about it. What you know, what it is, it's, it's going to be possible. And when right. I say, when I say premium experience, I mean our old experience that was non premium will be the premium experience. No, yeah, pretty know, much. Primarily, but I just saw um, Shadzar had a note here. The way they miss these deal rooms, we miss the deal rooms too. And is there things you can buy at a con you can't buy elsewhere? We used to make specific con. Merchandise. No, well, not only that, uh, uh, Shedzer, I'll give you an example. You can buy anything there is to buy at Amazon. So, I mean, I mean honestly, you don't even need a con. You can just no, go to Amazon true. and buy everything at, at a discount. But the thing mm -hmm. is, you don't get that experience, and, and you don't get what they call impulse buys. And, and I can't tell you how many people have walked up to the Frog God table. I don't think, and Eric's seen the table too, I don't think they were going to buy anything. But once Eric yeah. and I start talking to them and showing them stuff, then all of a sudden it's like, yeah, you're not going to be able to find the Arduin Trilogy at, at any kind of, you know, Online, that's only something you're going to find at a con at a table. This is what, and this is what saved my wife. She saved a lot of my, things like this. I mean, I, I have spent more money than I'm going to mention. I mean, I spent at least fifty dollars. Oh, <laughs> sure, that's yeah. right about what you. This spent, is what yeah. you miss. This is what you miss, and you miss the no, option. Which is my favorite part. I recognize this too. Yeah, I recognize that there are things that you, you can't replace, and I miss the auctions a great deal. Though, so, and I bet they miss me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a low tier bidder. <laughs> <laughs> but you know you, when you can spend twelve hundred dollars in a night you know part of it goes to charity you know it, it's all great that's hard to replicate is it possible i don't know but to do it in person again is going to be more expensive than it used to be that was my point no i i, I agree with you totally and, and you know i honestly i i mean i mean maybe, maybe talking out of turn i don't know but i th i really think gary Khan's moving towards that premium model because uh, luke's already said that three thousand people were way too much for the last year of Gary Khan, the one we all went to, was he said that was far too much. He'd like to see it half that, 1500 Well, if you charge regular prices for 1500 people, you're going to sell it in five minutes, and that's going to be it. That's that's your con. Um, yeah. which are, what, what Gary Khan could easily do and still fill up is charge $100 a ticket, and they well, can still, they'll still fill up. 200 you think? Well, 200. 200 Wow. I mean, I, I don't want to say that that's a good idea because it prices people out. I hate that, but you know what? Yeah. In order, if you order, Go to the Grand Geneva. Um, I know their bill is not cheap, right? Yeah. If you have half as many people to do it, and there's all kinds of other factors that I think you'll see. It. Like I said, when I say premium experience, like I said, I don't mean improved one. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be the same. Costlier one, yes. Yeah. No, and uh, 
once the chat are once again, I bit my tongue pushbacks towards the online con elements, but it's only proven Matt Kovo right when he said older people are not capable of adapting to And I hate people being <laughs> over right. I hate people being over right too. No, no, you're you're right and wrong there, but uh I some old people can actually do it. Well, look at Tim Cask. Tim Cask runs games online all the time, and Tim Cask is the most computer adverse human alive. And he well, said, "Wait, wait, wait, wait. Hold no, hold on. no, because you're wrong. Because I worked with Tim Cask to get your computer oh. working, and I can assure you that's not true. And I've worked with you to get your computer working, oh. and I'm sure it's not true as well. <laughs> well, if, if you're talking about somebody named Bill, Bill, uh, something or another, yeah, no, yeah, he's, I'm not gonna talk about what we call him, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we're talking about the same quote, air quotes, <clears throat> Bill, I when he used to go into uh, the Taverns Discord, I had to leave his mic on because we couldn't figure out a way to do it with push oh, the talk. Bill and even that push required the push the yeah. bill. <laughs> push the bill. It's okay. Just, just leave it on, and I'll I'll, I'll the mute guy him later. Turn him off, and then he'd leave. He'd leave the room, right? And he'd go to bed. And the next morning, he's still be in your chat. Ta- <laughs> yeah, they're you hear breakfast, breakfast going yeah, on. They're serving I breakfast. You gave me some the media one time. <laughs> Haven't let's, we all? Ah. Let's let's not let's not say we did. <laughs> let's talk about computers. Mike. Oh, uh, let's not, please. God, please no. She's not a devil at it all. Not yeah. at all. Yeah, no abuse to you, Mike. She's she lives up to the ideals of the devil. At I, I'll allow it. I'll totally, I'll totally allow it. You but you know what, though, you I, haven't, like you're I, I haven't been talking to some. Um, I have been talking to some Congoers that are wondering if maybe we might trade the devilets in, devilets in on younger models. So you know, yeah, you know, just, just oh. letting you know. But, oh, but the, yeah, maybe, maybe look at something in their twenties. Somebody in their twenties. Well, I, I don't know. You know just wait, wait, just wait, throwing wait, it out there. I'm gonna have a spot. No, nobody in their twenties goes to North Texas. Oh. <laughs> oh, I, my, luckily, I, honestly, my phone really isn't here, so I can't. She can't call me. My phone's in the car, so go go ahead and post away. Post uh-uh. away. Not gonna hurt me. No, nothing's gonna hurt me till I get to my drive home. <laughs> They'd be like crying in this. Oh, not in your beer because you'll be driving home. <laughs> oh God. I, I, well, I, I, I need I need a moment to catch my breath at this point. Well, so so let's uh let's uh since we're here, kind of talking about. Cons and total con. Um, tell me about some of your most memorable moments of total con, Zach, because I know you have some. I've heard some stories. Well, let's see. I remember the time that when I played the case of the Misty Magic with Frank, we played for four hours and we never went anywhere. <laughs> oh, because that's the investigative mystery yes. one. Yes. yes. And I, I was like, oh, boy. I was like, you know, this is cool because it's Frank and it's actually interesting. But and looking back, investigations sometimes are terrible at cons. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, it sounds like it would be great. I, I agree with you. It, it plays not good, but it, it does sound fun. But no, it, no. It's fun. It'd be fun to a group of people you already know. But uh-huh. I know this is a shock you, but sometimes when you're with people you don't know at a con table, you try to out-nerd each other. And uh-huh. we're already pretty high-level nerds all at the table, right? So uh-huh. trying to outsmart each other – Will take so much effort for an investigation. You never actually investigate anything. Talk about right. how you're going to do it without yeah. actually doing it. We never went anywhere. And so I learned something there. That's that's one of them. But my other favorite one was a time we went to a really fancy restaurant, <laughs> and with with I'll call him Bill, and we order all this really fancy food, and then poor Rocky Gardner, who's allergic to shellfish, uh, right oh, across man. from him is somebody else. I don't remember who it was, but they cracked their lobster, and it. All the juice flew all over Rocky's seventy dollar meal. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and, and so he I, couldn't eat a bite, right? He could not eat sure. a bite after that. No, oh. I tried to explain to Bill what happened while we had to order a second entree, <laughs> and <laughs> he's like, "I don't understand." I'm like that's why he's still alive because you're not in charge. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't make him eat that. No, so you have to eat it. Sorry. To make the, to make, to make the story clear to people who don't understand, Rocky's allergic to shellfish. He's terribly allergic to shellfish. And uh, like it could kill him. And all of a sudden, when somebody gets cracking, boom, all the juice, all over his food. And like, I like Rocky. If I didn't, if it was Ian, I'd be like, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Let him be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine. He's going to get hives or something. Yeah, who cares? It's Ian. Yeah. yeah. It'd be entertaining. <laughs> See, speaking of Ian, I think he's got some frog god stuff still. We need to talk to him. He's probably got it in the back of his garage somewhere. From from the last total con. Oh, there's Dr. Gillespie showed up here. Yeah, you guys talk about weight. 
What, what yeah, great, I'm saying, you know, anyways, well, on. you know, I'm, I'm, yeah. pushing, I'm pushing yeah, three yeah. bills. I'm pushing three bills here, but, uh, <laughs> but actually, uh, I, I would like to uh, give a couple of shout outs to my co-stars here because number one, Eric has uh, been uh, doing the health thing with his wife and Zach has been working out like a fiend the last couple of years. Why don't you tell us about your new little exercise regimen that's helped you lose a lot of weight? Mine? Yes. Yeah, I, I play disco music inside of a fake uh, a fake environment with two laser swords. I also and, I do a, I do a boxing train. I do VR workouts. I do it, but it works though, right? I mean, it's worked for you. No, it works really well. In fact, it worked incredible. I have a bike where I can bike anywhere in the world, and uh, oh, not what I bet. Yeah, sure it isn't. Sure it is. Maybe be nice to me now. <laughs> that Canadian politeness coming through right there. It's like, not what I meant. There's a great oh, easy fit where you can actually, you know, you know, you're, you're playing the game Doom, Mike. Uh, yeah, way back. You no, know, you need extra ammo and you got to run get it. Uh huh. Magic pedaling to it, and you're already oh. really tired. You're like, oh dear. You know, really need that ammo because you sit there pedal like in a tank arena, and you're shooting people with you like your head aims it, and you're on the bike with riding. Ten minutes, man. You want to kill yourself? You're so tired. Like I can't <laughs> kill anymore. I'm old. But you keep doing it because it, it's a game. There's one where you're like flying a Pegasus, and every time you keep flapping your wings when you do the bicycle turns, and then you get tired, and you don't want to flap your wings anymore. <laughs> and then you're so like, you start falling. <laughs> when, but the thing is, when you're in VR, you really are sensitive to like you know height, <laughs> and so you, <laughs> you kind of get this like forgetful feeling to where you just fall. Yeah, do I just play Beat Saber all day? Yeah, I, that's mostly what I do is Beat Saber. I, I do other stuff too. I'm actually I try about every fitness game you can get, and currently a. Uh, there's one is gun club is pretty good. So trying that one anyway. Well, yeah, that's, I, I'm impressed. I'm impressed by you, by uh, your dedication. To that. Well, you saw me do that last time with the game. Hall con. I know. So I'm saying, I, I wish I, I wish I could find something like that. That would interest me on the computer. I, I try to play computer games while I'm riding a bike. and It's just not the same. I, I can't, I, I end up playing the game. And then halfway through, I notice I'm not pedaling the bike anymore because I've gotten so engrossed in the game so i unfortunately i am not able to uh an oculus quest and to, to oculus quest and about 10 bucks a month and you can be a vz fit and it does all the stuff you want to do I'm, you, don't I'm have just, to you don't have to dance like a fool to disco music dude because that's what i do no, I, yeah, yeah. I, I, nintendo is what i use this has gay and that's cool i wonder uh, how much music, i wonder how much weight i could lose to online porn done through a vr no, right. what do you think? none that's <laughs> well yeah dep- yeah all right but <laughs> Nintendo uh, Switch uh, Rhythm Boxing Two is what I yep. uh, I've been using. I actually got little, rid of my my, my rage. She's like, "You look different." I go, "Really? What's what, what, so? What, how do I look different?" She goes, "In all the time I've been married to you, you've always had love handles." I'm like, "Okay, you don't have love handles. Where did you go?" Like, <laughs> you got a girlfriend, duh. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. <laughs> no, no but it's I, like, so I guess it's working. Yeah, no, you, you do the boxing, right? You do like the fit, yeah. fit box. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so if the beat saber is full of aerobic exercise. You pick a song with eight four. I assure you, you pick a song at expert plus and you run it through beat stage. It doesn't matter whether it's eight four, you're just dead because it's 3,000 blocks. <laughs> 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 so but you're right. He's actually right. It is aerobic exercise, especially when you plan it correctly. And I overcorrect and I do, I move back and forth and I over exaggerate because when you're playing in a game, right, and something's flying at your head, right, you duck. Whether you, what, even though you know, I'm in my living room, right? I'm standing in the living room. There's nothing here, but this big giant like crate is flying at my head. I duck, and I find that that is really useful for encouraging exercise. Just like you know, the, the weirdest part with the BR bike is when you can use Google Maps, right? And it, it shows you a large bike in Japan. I did Hungary the other day. I'm in Hungary, right? I'm biking, and uh, the only thing that takes me off is the fact that uh, when you go up hills, the bike doesn't incline. Right. Other than that, like I really, I feel like I'm there, like, hey, look, it's an ice cream shop, and that's what I think. I don't actually, you know, I realize that I see it because there's a guy outside the ice cream cone, and it's a picture, right? So you're actually biking through these places, and you you come, you you overlook the the, the technical limitations. You just kind of like just bike, and it's amazing. Mm-hmm. So I, yeah, that, that has helped me. So you ask how I did it. That's how I did it was the VR stuff. That's why. Uh- uh, that's, right. that's why uh, VR RPG is worse, and because people already break their coffee tables trying to play. I broke my fan. Music. Mm. So I broke my fan. I found that a uh, Skyrim VR, although awesome, Ooh. it really is awesome, and it does get you tired because it makes the warrior build with the sword and shield better. 
you will without um real aware, spatial awareness that's what I actually my wife loves this we have a beautiful living room with a really nice used back handmade carpet that is like just beautiful to see i bought the ugliest round carpet i could find and it's terrible and i put it flat in the middle of the floor so like my feet can feel when i'm in a certain range and i don't have any i don't let old women and i don't let kids in my house so therefore <laughs> and she's more spatially aware than me but no it, it it does happen you become so into it i have actually punched one of my bookcases once oh wow it hurt real bad and i was playing um gorn uh it's a game where you just kill stuff all the time and i got been on the chariot racing game and Next thing I know, I look up and I pull my headset. I'm facing, like, looking at my really expensive collection thing. <laughs> like, oh. if I punched that glass, I could have destroyed a thousand dollar copy of the white box. You know, and so <laughs> you know, you do have to be aware. But yeah, no, it's a it's a good time and it really does help. Well, let's talk. We'll talk about conventions and stuff we missed with conventions. Let's, let's talk about the most important thing. Um, we've missed uh, uh, hubcap size chicken. Our, our pork loin sandwiches for a couple of years now. That's probably why I look better. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't doesn't help. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't hurt, does it? But the absolute. It, it's no, sad though. It's really sad. No, but oh, here, let's put this way. I'm a terrible foodie, right? I'm I'm the worst kind. You drive no, me. you never. No, come on, man. Nah. John yeah. Lyle changed my life when he told me that we had to stop for that pork loin sandwich in Iowa. I mean, my life fundamentally shifted from. There's something good about the Midwest too. I want to travel to the Midwest. <laughs> I must be there because these meals were, it was just amazing. Their state fair food put Texas to shame. Oh, good stuff. Yeah. No, no. I, it, it's killing it, me. No, it, Mike and I, if anybody doesn't know, we would drive from Texas to Wisconsin uh, twice a year, round trip. And we discovered that halfway through, almost a halfway point, you could have a sandwich that with a, with a piece of pork. This big around, I'm not lying. Mm. This is not a lie. <laughs> and you would eat that on a bun that this big. So great. And just saying it now it makes me hungry. So thanks yeah, for that. Yeah, that, I miss that, that. Yeah, I miss it. Mama, make my wife make those for me. I, I may just have yeah, going I, up to thinking about that. Jesus I have just thought about driving up there. Just, just, just <laughs> have <laughs> it. Just <laughs> take his medication. Just <laughs> it's like, it's my blood sugar. All right, I'm at one twenty seven. Not too oh, bad. All that's, right, that's, that's you're okay. You're doing all right. Yeah, I'm, I'm, that'll, that'll probably uh, just talking about that sandwich and jumping up. Yeah, it's probably raised it about twenty yeah. points. Yeah, it's just like sounds. Really well, well, we we we've got the offer from Laramie because Laramie is based around that area. That the next time we go through Iowa, we better talk to Laramie because he wants to take us to a, a pork loin place he knows of, so I, which I don't know where it's at, but it's in Iowa somewhere. So Laramie's hardcore, man. He's like, you know, you do realize that he has teamed with the dark side to make sure that the customer service of frog guys. He's, he's been doing my job lately, which is awesome because he's doing my job much better than I ever did my job. <laughs> so, so, uh, I thought Laramie's all Laramie, Laramie's awesome. shout out to yeah, you. We'll have to make great. sure you hear this episode. No, he is awesome. well, he's an awesome guy, but not only is he an awesome guy, he, he, yes, he does your job, but he also does it because he has, he has somebody help guiding and I won't say who it is, but, uh, hmm. the queen darkness. Hmm. I figured. Yeah, she's she, yeah, though that those and she's gonna make you a pork loin sandwich. I promise. Okay, so, you know, that's one of the great things about you know, going back to what we've been talking about and touching on conventions, especially the smaller ones, are really good for getting to know people. Making, I, I've witnessed or overheard, or as my wife would say, ear hustled on numerous business deals going on at North Texas over the years, and uh, it's, it's been an amazing thing to see. But at the same time, something like the Take Our Tavern Discord server has gotten people connected within the industry. People find artists, they find layout artists, they find your brand uh, new you writers like that. You find your way to actually go in to create stuff and sell it. And that actually, I and this is from a guy who, um, this is from a guy who uh, I just see Kim George talking about being a foodie, and I pay more attention to that than you guys. No, um, the. <laughs> This is from a guy who I got my job at Frog God through a convention, right? And so you're absolutely correct. And that's something that in a way is missed. But you know what? That was also, I guess, six years ago. Now, Christ, I might do this forever. Um, uh, but it, like when I saw Alice get hired and she came through your server to ours for a chat right. and she got hired and it was the same kind of like just serendipity kind of thing where Bill Webb is a good 90% good judge of people. <laughs> and 
he um, saw something that, that he thought that was someone with talent had enthusiasm to do it, and he saw it through Discord, and I think it makes it possible. So you, that is re replicated, but in a different way, because I remember you pointing that out way early on, Eric. When your first year you went, you and Rachel pointed that out, that the things happened at a con with yep. uh, small publishing that was a little different. And at the time, I, North Texas was unbelievable to me because I was a See, our, my wife is talking to Kim George. I'm more interested in that than you. Two. I can't be sorry. Well, uh, yeah, they're going to start talking about food. Don't be starving over here. They, they, no, but, they, they, no just, but that part is kind of replicated. But you know what? The one thing is there are people who aren't comfortable going into online spaces and just like introduce themselves or serve themselves. It, and there are people you could kind of it would be more comfortable in a slow environment than in person. I think right. about like Liz Stewart, one of my favorite people in the world. I would never have met her in an online forum because she wouldn't talk in an online forum. She's too quiet, nice, and decent, right? But when you meet her at a con, you play a game with her and talk to her, you learn how cool she is and what they do. And like, I didn't know she ran a podcast for like two years until I listened to her podcast, didn't know it was her. <laughs> but, you know, um, you meet people like that at cons, you're a little harder in digital spaces, but, you know, that could change. Too. Well, well, I, 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 um, that's interesting you say that because I remember one of the, one of the things that came up when Gary Com was going to do its quote unquote interviews or whatever, which turned out not to be that. I can see why right. they do it. Well, a lot of people were complaining because they're, they just like to come. They don't like, to, they just don't like to interact like that. And they were, they were afraid. They were, they were introverted enough that just the fact of doing a, I don't know how long. Mike, read the, read the, long read the comment, important comment. Oh, we need to fries take from all West cafe. I found a better, I got two better paces. Spaces in that, or places uh -huh. too bad. Right. Go ahead. Just, by the way, did you see John Lyle's picture of the guacamole? Yeah, I did. yeah that, that's one of them. Oh, I haven't been there, but I am going there. That's awesome. I but anyway, I was going to say that, that that there was a. Lot, I was surprised that there were people that commented that they that they just wouldn't go to Gary Con rather than have to even do like a five second online interview because they were that uncomfortable with doing something, uh, you know, online with somebody else. And so I, I, I mean, it's true. There's a lot of people that are very uncomfortable about any kind of. Um, interactions online but but in person they're different they're 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 when you see somebody and that's the same with most things look there's so many people that get into online piss fights on facebook that if they met no person, it would be will be just Are they angry i've never they're, seen they're, that they're, it's because it's online because they don't have any consequences when you when you're with somebody in person everything changes and and that that is the one difference between in person to online is that we're much more polite in person than we are online, yes. and, and and we also we game better, we we strategize better, everything's better because you, you don't have this faceless, nameless, faceless person. You have an actual flesh and blood human being sitting in front of you. And I can't tell you how many people that I met that I knew of online and I wasn't too impressed with. And then once I met him in person, um, Ian McGarty, for instance, I, I thought they were a great person, you know, but when, I'm just kidding with it. I'm, I'm just messing with it. But no, I mean, seriously, there's, there's a lot of person. people like that, that I just didn't know much about uh, until I met them actually in person. And I thought this is really a great person or a great guy or a great well, girl. It, I mean, just, you know, it, true experience. That is that there are more than one individual who has, uh, for lack of a better phrase, been an asshole to me uh, directly online or worse. I know. Yet, when see me, but when seeing me in person, I'm like, hey, 10 car, come over and it's a bro hug and a handshake and great to see you because the internet can get you, you know, we used to, you know, you had the bar muscles, right? Somebody could get in talk to the bar and they like, I can fight anybody. <laughs> people, right. get, people get that with the internet because. Well, uh, I, I, I'm, I, I punch everybody. Screw you! And it becomes, uh, it, it becomes worse than the mean. They, they, they believe it, but then face to face, their own limitations remind them of, oh yeah, they're uh, person too. No, they're person too. And I actually, I actually like them. I mean, there had been one issue which I disagree with them on, but on the internet, that became my overwhelming, uh, my overwhelming issue, my own focus. And I, I think that's something that we as a society are going to somehow going to have to overcome because the, the internet, social media especially, uh, breeds that. And more so, uh, like if you're somebody who doesn't like social media because you think it's toxic, I'm going to tell you right now, it, pair it down yeah. to going into groups that are specialized on what your interests are. Uh, 
If you like the OSR, go to an OSR group. If you like 5E, go into a 5E group. And ones that are moderated, and you know what? Your experience is going to be amazing. It's when you have to read everybody's feed where they have to do their, uh, for lack of a better phrase, political diarrhea every waking moment at everybody out there. No, I just had a thought. That applies both directions. I, I, I'm a, oh, yeah. I'm a member of groups on both sides on this because I hate all of it, but I have to join them, right? Um, and I'll be honest with you, uh, it, it goes both ways. Um, and it is just tiresome. It's tiresome to have to give your give your bona fides, man. You know what my bona fides are? My bona fides are I love this page 16 of the Earl Otis basic set. I think the art there on the <laughs> page is badass. Those are my bona fides. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right. Or sure. I just started playing 5e and I love it. That's your bona fides, right? Your bona fides aren't uh, anything else. I have an opinion of Wizards of the Coast. Keep it to yourself. Let's play a game. That's what we're doing. Right. right. That's, that's too hard to do online, though. But and, and you're right in person. I'll give you an example. Like, um, <clears throat> I I never met James Spawn, and I uh, wish I'd never had now. But no, I never met him. And then wait, and wait I, you I, never you you I, never I had saw, never met him until he came. You to never our saw club. the tape, the topless James Bond. Until, no, until right? he came. Oh, I saw that finally. But no, I'm just saying until oh, he came. Never to mind. Con, okay, never okay. Oh, you got a picture. That's right. Yeah. And so we have a, we have a fundamental difference of opinion on uh, the Last Jedi, which I think is a terrible movie, and he loved. And so we we, we we talked. Yeah, of course he is. We talked about this on the online a few times. But but I, and I said, you know what? When you come to Texas, I want to ask you a few questions, and you I want you I want you to answer them the best you can on this movie. So we had a perfectly human discussion for about an hour That's on why, why, why I didn't like the movie and why he liked it. And and we both came away saying, okay, well, we don't agree, but we didn't name call. We didn't say right. you're, you're a Nazi. You're the worst human ever. ever, ever. Mike <laughs> and, and, and I think that happens so much more in, in person. You don't like the whole set, do you? I knew it. <laughs> and, and it's funny now, because you see these geek groups like Star Trek and Star Wars absolutely go to war over you know Nothing. certain over certain things you know and, 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 oh, no, and, and, and uh, dr gillespie's one of the ones that likes to throw gasoline on that particular fire no but seriously but you know but it's true because but it, these are kind of people though if you were sitting around a table and you had to argue about some you know the mandalorian you would have a perfectly normal conversation about it but when you're online everything just gets so magnified so out of control and that's yeah. what that's one of the reasons that's great about going to online conventions is because or go, i'm sorry going to in-person conventions because james and i were able to meet at the convention talk about it and stay friends even though as you said zach he was absolutely wrong and, and by the way he's acknowledged he's wrong since then i don't know if you know that so no, I did not. Um, no he has oh, really uh, I'll, I'll have to call he's, he's acknowledged and, ver and verify well, because that. um he thought that <laughs> no i'm not going to get into it <laughs> <laughs> moving on the great wow. yeah. well that's well, here, well here but here's another point if you're if you're in a voice chat room all right with with very few exceptions and i and, and the exceptions in it on, on tavern chat have generally been expelled. Oh God! Stop showing me your phone. Dor that's Dor That's uh, Dorothy from the Golden Girls. That's inside. Uh, that's inside joke between James. You, Spawn and you I. and James. Yeah. But I mean, if if you're participating oh, in a, a voice chat, it's often much more civil. The co same conversation, same topics. No, you're I speaking agree. by voice, and then you go, you move it over to text, and, and then it becomes. F you, F you, your well, mother. The other way there's no tone. There's not tone on uh, online or yeah, in text. And there's video no has tone. tone has tone and also has expressions, right? Mm -hmm. I find that that's the one part about online conventions is similar to what Mike's talking about. Is you're playing in a game with people with video, you are getting a whole lot more of the. You know, I often will make sarcastic jokes. I try hard not to do online because they don't come across as, as, as they are. You come across as mean. Right, and I, I realized that I had to, to check myself. Yeah, emotes do give a bit of tone, but sometimes they give the wrong tone too. <laughs> yes. Well, you oh, know, you're being a sarcastic asshole, aren't you? Oh, well, uh, <laughs> here's to you. Well, Frog Guy Games Day last year, we had a game, um, and Kim George was actually in my game, and we had two gentlemen in there—not one, but two gentlemen that were foreign—and we 
we were able to have fun. We did the game, but it was hard because just you, you, you don't realize how much you rely on, on, on visual cues when you do things. And so I think one of the gentlemen was from France. Kim may correct me. The other, I don't remember the, who the, where the other one was from, but they were both, well, they're both foreign. Like I said, everybody had ended up having a great time, but it was tough relying just on verbal cues when English is not the first language for two Which of your five people. Which is why I think that the video part of it is going to make the difference or a VR kind of aspect where it has facial expressions and that's all coming. So, well, that's what Zoom, that's what great thing the Zoom brings is, is you can all, you can see the people plus and that's why Zoom was such a huge success too. No, and I think you're going to see that we are to be still at the beginning of the beginning when it comes to collaboration and online tools. I think that you're going to see stuff like early on what we were trying to produce, but we don't realize you don't have to because it's getting done already. Um, simple Zoom tools for games, like just a Fog of War. Yeah. If you just have a map in Fog of War, you can run an old school game, no problem. Oh, I mean, no yeah, problem. I do. Right. And those tools are already made or have been made already. But we were talking with a, an attorney I won't name and uh, <clears throat> Beard. Um, he, and we were talking <laughs> about actually making one and investing in it. And we didn't because it was already getting done so fast. You, we're going to see all these tools explode in ways we don't expect. And it's going to make our hobby better. Just like, you know, the more inclusive we become, and I know that word's really like touchy, but seriously, the more inclusive we become, the better our hobbies become because we have more people from everywhere. And if you feel like you're from a foreign country, you barely speak English, but you feel welcome to come to a game run by two, two Americans and on an American server, and you still feel comfortable coming, everybody's better. I mean, everybody's yeah. better because of it. And I think that with more tools like we see now, but as they improve, I think you're going to see a lot of this nastiness in the hobby kind of go aside. I think that everything's got a fad, right? Eventually, people are going to get tired. You can't be angry that long. You and would think, humble. God, you would think, Zach. I man, don't know, man. Man. I, I live in New York City, and I, I, <laughs> yeah, I've, seen, <laughs> I've seen anger I, go on for a generation. Angry the, the, the gangs of New York. York yeah. week in a tiny town, so what do I know? Yeah, you, you 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 live in like you know idealistic America. I live in real America. Uh, I live. I I It's not San Francisco. I'm I'm not dodging human feces, but um, I'm sure I'm going to get there. <laughs> but in San Francisco, but yeah, New York, they still have signs that won't hire Irish. I mean, come on, man. They're, they're oh, still wait, 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 wait. <laughs> sure cop. No, no, Unless you want to be a no, cop. No, no, no. We 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 have locations that say we'll only hire hire <laughs> Irish. <laughs> yes, just yeah, turned around on one hundred one eighty on that. We will only hire Irish here if you're. <laughs> it's like only only Irish women. If only you're anybody Irish. else, I can't only do Irish exit. women. Eric, oh, the there we go. There's the there's the Irish. Hobby and you both just ruined it. Thanks a lot. Oh, oh it's the Irish broke. I could, talk like a, I could talk like a leprechaun, as I was told by an Irish bartender in the South Bronx. She's like, <laughs> Yeah, Irish broke isn't bad, but you'll sound like a fucking leprechaun. You don't talk like that, shite. I'm like, All right, never mind, Bernie. I apologize. Oh, man. Just just give me a beer. I, I'll I'll stop. And then you did you introduce your Scottish brogue so she could see how bad that was. No. Well, my Scottish brogue is horrible. I won't even try that one, man. That, that, I'm sorry. Man, I all I can say is Scottish or curse words, so I'm not gonna say any Scottish. That would well, be awesome because you know, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't mind what language they're speaking, whenever there's anything from the aisles. Doesn't matter which, which part of the aisles it is. I've never I my understanding of accents is weak, which is like mm -hmm. goes back to what you said. Having video chat in a game with uh, foreign nationals would help me a lot because I can listen to someone Scottish talk. Like Jason uh, McCartan, right? Jason Paul McCartan, yes. Yeah, yeah. Scottish I can, Paul, I can only say Alan, but Paul Allen's a different guy. No, Jason McCartan, the first time I heard him talk, I'm like, what language is that? I'm like, oh, wait, that's English, I think. <laughs> you know, and but but, he, so but he, he, he can tone it down, all right? When he gets excited, he really kicks out. But he can tell her down. He's been in the States long enough. But uh, it, 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 is it a problem? Yeah. I mean, I, I have to admit, you know, the visual helps with the voice. I mean, uh, I, I, I probably, I don't know if I told the story here, but when I was a, a, not a rookie cop, but back, oh, my God, over 20 years ago, uh, my, my, my cat was. Rookie, just midway through his career. Yeah. My, my, my captain at the time was, uh, what do they call them? Uh, uh, 
like a like a like a, a, a piggyback or a bring back. He was born in the states, but raised in Ireland, and then came back to the states. So he was native born U.S., but he spoke with an Irish brogue, and he was from Donegal. And his brogue wasn't that bad for Donegal, but I've met his parents, and his mother talks like this, and my son's on out there half past four, and, he's <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm looking at her, and I'm translating, literally translating in my head. And I'm always like a sentence or two behind. And then I just gave up. And I'm like, Paul, what did your mother just say? She's like, oh, man. She's saying that uh, I'm going to be on the news at half past four. And if you were, if you were, if we're going to still be here, but we're not, you could catch me on the Irish news. I go, I don't give a fuck, Cap. I really don't. So that's what I learned. We're inclusive here, except for you hate Scottish people. I got it, Eric. I got it, Eric. I got it for that. Now. Yeah, yeah, there you go. And then, but then his father, he spoke with a darny girl accent. But he spoke like I was a retard and enunciated every fucking word because it was like an American or foreign country. Fast. I like it. <laughs> I was just like, uh, just, just speed it up a little bit and we'll be good because the two extremes are very fast and very slow are killing me. But, uh, <laughs> no, I can see that. It's funny. I saw a show once where they talked about how if you – you know, it's, English sounds so specific, right? You hear, you hear word, you get a word, you get a word. But you look at actual someone speaking English, you don't see the breaks in the words. It's like if you see someone speaking Chinese. The words right. all string together. There's no real pause. And it's only because you've been trained to do it. So it, it all is just born. In well, then again, you, look, look at New Yorkers. New Yorkers tend to abbreviate words and condense them because if it's got more than two shout syllables, them. it takes too long. To, so we got to, like, shut it down to something really small. Yeah. Come on. You use gestures? Us use gestures? N never. And that's why, me being on the video, people listening to this at home on the uh, Tavern Chat podcast have no idea the hand gestures that He's I'm using. He's flipping you off. He's from New right York. Now. You. Yeah, well. <laughs> I, uh, I won't say yeah. anything about how Texans speak because no, we, we speak correct we, English. We're frozen. So. You can't talk. Y'all, howdy and bless your heart. So that's all you need to know. <laughs> yeah, bless your heart me what you think. I and, and, that. And, and drop the G whenever you're you're not chewing, you're chewing. You're not chewing? going, you're going. Every, yeah, you always drop that G. So, so, so G's only exists at the not, beginning of a word, not at the end. Not all hanging right. out, you're hang, handing out. Well, not actually mm -hmm. hanging. You're hanging. You're not hanging. Yeah, hanging out. You're not hanging. No, everything. Yeah, you always drop your G. That's just is the way way it goes. If you if you want to if you want to talk correct Texan correctly, so I, I probably don't want to. You don't want to correct. And then you have to you got you got to do the draw, which is means you talk like Matt McConaughey. Yeah, all right, all right, all right, and do that. But yeah, that's I, it's weird because you know I grew up, I've lived my whole life in Texas, and my parents, I'll go to other places, and and I can hear some people. Some people say I can hear Texan, you speak Texan, but my parents were real big about speaking, I guess, correctly, and so we we never really developed my brothers and I had very much of a Texas drawl. Uh, whereas some friends I know, man, it's it's very pronounced. But the only time I really had somebody call me on was when I went to England. About twenty years ago, everybody there knew I was from Texas. Even though I'm like, I, I don't even have any kind of a Texas draw. Like, oh yeah, we can tell you're from Texas. But most most places in the state, it's they may know I'm from the South, but there's not necessarily a Texas connection. But but I but I did a lot of work to, like I said, we were never we we just weren't spoken to like that. We we were spoken. We used correct English in my family. <laughs> oh, well, know. depending on how you want to co say correct English, I mean. <laughs> Correct my, English. My my father grew up in Ridgewood on the border of Brooklyn, and he had a very Brooklynese uh, Brooklyn vernacular. What's that? Brooklyn. <laughs> no, no, see, I knew it. I, I, why? Why did I do that? Yeah, you know, <laughs> I, you know, I mean, you, had, you know, you talk, you know, talk a bit like this and that and these and those and that. And he actually took uh, before I was born. He took he took speech lessons to get rid of the Brooklynese. God bless him. Uh, but yeah, it, it, different areas have different dialects, and you know, even the Poconos. Can Eric come out and play? When I was a kid, it's like, oh, that's me, <laughs> Eric. <laughs> Eric, 
Hi. Oh, you got a furniture suite. What? What? A furniture suit? What? You just pronounce words really differently than New Yorkers do. Never mind. <laughs> well, so we, we've we covered a lot of uh, things. Total Con. And uh, so uh, what do we have? I'm going to pretend like I don't know any of this. What do we have what? coming up from, from Frog God Games in the future? In the, um, in, the, in, the, in the calendar year to come. Well, I talked about a few of them early on. Um, we got this year. We have a book of magic items that's be coming out called the Tome of Wonders items. We'll have a, a Cyclopean Deep Five E conversion. Um, we'll do Whisper and Venom Five E. We'll also have Necropolis with a big map by Alyssa Faden. And nice. then we have some of the best like modules because we've got a new point in Frog God, which is really great. Is that we we no longer uh, we need a 16,000 word adventure and we need it yesterday. We're not there anymore. What we are is like, okay, what we need is the following five bullet points that we want. So we like, we hired authors based on what we want and what they're good at with bullet points for it rather than accepting anything we can get because we just, we need to churn because it publishing is all about, you know, getting things out so you can pay the people who do the work and so you can actually still do it. But we're, we're caught up and, you know, done it change the way we've done things to the point where we can order stuff. And for example, one of the things coming up we have that we ordered and we ordered specifically was we ordered our Christmas module for this year is going to be Orcus in a Winter Wonderland. And Ooh. the author is uh, Steve Winter. Aha. Uh -huh. Right. I see the connection. Yeah. That's just a funny connection. But we also have, we picked Ed Greenwood to write an adventure. We actually went through some of his older stuff. And Ed Greenwood's going to write something similar to that with uh, bullet points because we're trying to make 20 late 2020 or then 2021 the world the underworld year because we want to go back to what it is it that frog god does the absolute best we do challenging adventures underground i mean honestly that's we're known for rap and ethic we're known for cyclopean deeps and the slumbering czars and the so we want to have adventures like around we have a we have a rap and ethic adventure coming up we're going to uh, release down to quest corax early as an indiegogo so you can get a sample of it um, I might even write something. I'm actually trying to plan to write some of the caravan stuff from uh, Cyclopean Deeps. Um, and we're trying to concentrate on things that we think are fun and we have the ability to actually focus on. And we're real excited. I mean, everything, I mean, I'm working right now on uh, the order for the ne uh, Necropolis special edition box set. And I am making boxed. Oh, okay. well, it's, yeah, it's sort of, it's a special edition version, but it's got similarities to a box for special edition. It's designed specifically with the guppies, the Alexes, and the Minehearts in mind because it's not just sealed; it's sealed three times. Oh, so you're not supposed to open it. And actually, it could be just a brick inside, and they never know. Out. But it's going to have a mummy's tomb-like seal. It's going to have a shrink wrap seal and another layer of shrink wrapping on it, and it's going to be awesome because it's going to be expensive as all hell, but it's going to be great because we now like. One of the things I didn't like, and I can say this, is I wasn't I didn't love our collector's books because I thought that they were just kind of the same-ish. We're going to make the collector's edition stuff wild. Like the collector's edition version of the Sword of Wizardry box set is great because it, it has the exact feel. Susie did a masterful job of making it look like an original first edition box set with the front of the sticker. The sticker's even a little off-center looking like, right, on the cover. Just like Tim Katz laid on top there, right? I mean, it, there you go. It looked that way, and that was great. But now that we kind of know how to work with Regent, um, the, the publisher we were in China, we can do the fancy stuff. And then we're trying to do like the Necropolis one. I'll make real fancy. And we're trying to make the higher tier pledges really more interesting because that thank you, higher tier pledge people. You're the people who support us so we can make the screens and the adventure packs and the things that go with it. So we can have really well thought out full process um, Kickstarters and crowdfunds that make sense. It was a reward for the people who actually are making it happen is there. And then we have other ideas coming up. We're not going to do, we just did to all and that's going to a lot of those are just fascinatingly good. Um, I was not really excited to do it because I don't know anything about Mesoamerican culture. Although I like hidden shrine a whole lot. Right. I wasn't as, as excited to do it just because I didn't know, man, it's great. It, and we're doing, we will be doing more lost land stuff. But like, for instance, rather than doing five modules and stuff to go with it, we're going to do a system neutral um, source book for the underworld. I mean, things like that that we think are fun. So we're we're exciting. And we're going to have, we had a, we were, by circumstance of serendipity, we were lucky because COVID hit, struck a company that had its own warehouse that was run from the CEO's house on a farm and had the, the people who work there have already been working together online for a while. So we were able to use the tools that existed 
for us to make the books we already made and make them faster and better and use the time to be able to actually not just still be alive and pay us, but to be alive and pay us and give out great stuff and improve what we're doing. So we've used this horrible situation the best we could, and we're all excited about it. All right, you get a question from Chad's R, and I, I can almost answer this one. Did you consider doing a live stream campaign design thing and just take stuff from our chat as part of that participation? I think you'd have uh, legal issues as to who owns what. It's a, it's a potential bag of shit. Well, and yeah. you know what? That's I was, yeah. that's a tough one, and I actually I've gone back and forth with other people about this. What do you do? Uh, some people don't like to read adventures, for example, um, because they think that they you know they're picking up somebody else's idea and they want it to be their idea. I don't subscribe to that as much, but a cr crowdsource one where everybody contributes to it, I don't like them for a couple of reasons. And the biggest one is um, to follow through for people who are actually going to deliver to us in ways that we can actually use it. Or ways we're using it in a way that was intended. We don't know. Um, <laughs> sum it up, edit it, and resell it. Yeah, no, we, we probably don't want to, and it's not because we don't think it's potentially a good idea. But that's not what we're good at. Yeah, that's 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 rough. I mean, I, I participated kind kind of. I can't even say I organized it. I didn't, but Ten Cars Landing was crowdsourced, and, we, and it came out great. And there's a great community behind it. But it's a, it, it's a lot more work than you could imagine, and uh, thank God I was not the one that put it together. I, I I was more I was more great idea and figurehead, which is probably all you want from me or something like that. No, I so. I do that. That's a, that's my role at Frog God. <laughs> oh, all right, good. Ed. There you go. <laughs> no, Hi. so and all the things I just said about Frog God, by the way, is a caveat. But that's the current plan that I probably wasn't supposed to talk about because I, my problem is. I know both you assholes real well, and I get goaded into saying things I probably shouldn't. So, shh, Kim George, be quiet. Yeah, don't don't repeat this to the mass. Do it I didn't think of this is a marketing opportunity. I swear. So right, I, I, right. I get a lot. Of, I know as a customer service, I get a lot of people, uh, especially recently, asking, um, well, "Hey, I've got this great idea. Um, I would love Frog Eye Games to publish it, or do y'all need writers? What, what, what can I do to become a writer for Frog Eye Games?" Or uh, now, I know what to do with the artists. I send the artists to Casey. But if you were a budding writer that wanted to get published by Frog God, uh, what would you do? Or, or uh, is, would, is there anything you can do? Um, well, you can go and hope that you build webs in a frog chat. <laughs> 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 or the honest, the honest answer to that uh, is you would have already published something. That's, that's, that's that, actually that's what I tell people. Yeah, I, not I a gatekeeping them. role. Yep. It, the, the, the problem is, and I, I thought it no one knows who he is, but I signed a contract with somebody back in oh May of last year that to write you know twelve thousand words. He's recommended from a friend of mine. I'm like, you know what? I don't mind. We'll do this. And hey, this is the pitch is pretty good. Let's do it. Never heard a word back. Right. And so the effort it takes to go through the process to hire somebody and then until you can do that is not useful. We don't assign out stuff we don't want returned. Right. And so if you have gone through the effort to make, and it just could be a PDF. We don't care if the layout's great. We don't care any of those things. If you put the effort in to have something and you put together a PDF and you published it and you can say, hey, here it is on drive through If you want us to look at it and read it, then we're a lot more interested in taking a look at the writing stuff. But we honestly, we have a good stable of writers and it takes something a little bit, a little bit of jazz that's unique. And for Alice, it was a really a passion for what she was doing that was a little yes. bit different, right? Yeah. And so we encourage that. Like, I would not encourage someone to write to us and say, hey, we, I have an adventure about a dungeon because we do have a lot of those and we want more of them, but we have people that are assigned to certain ones. But I want to write a, a, a series of tables about hex crawling. I'm more interested in that. Why? Because you have to be really, really um, passionate about that stuff to uh, want to do that. And if you have one already written, you show me what it is. And I'm more inclined to go, okay, let me take a look at this. And let me have, you know, the lesser known people like Finch um, take a look at it and or Bill and talk about it because we actually, we believe in stuff that is you're passionate about. We want to do it, but showing you have the wherewithal to go. I went from A to B and I, I had that idea. I wrote it. I had someone else edit it and I posted it. And I don't care if it's word or PDF. It's fine. I did the wrong way. Don't do what I did. I made a box set all by my bad self. That's not true, but I went and hired people and I did all the things I was supposed to do. And I ran the process, but I did, and I wrote the adventure for a box set with miniatures and everything else. 
don't do that. We don't, that's not, it won't make you become mean. You don't want to be me. I assure you, but uh, just a, a simple digital product that you know, not sale. It could be free. It could be your blog. Um, or if you had a blog that had a year worth of history, um, that's useful too. And all these things are useful because we look promoting new stuff is makes probably cool. And we want to see people be successful. Even if you never published with frog God, but you, you know, you're going to do something you want to, you want to ask about the publishing process. I mean, I want to talk to you about it because that's all I know. You want to talk about football. You stupid. That's not a good idea. But if you, you know, if you're on a friends list, you friend me on Facebook and you have a question, I'm probably going to answer it because I'm, I like to answer questions, but I talk too much. You know, I don't mind. I don't mind it doing that. And if you want to see something get done, be amazed. Just doing a project will change your mind on what you want to do. If you want to get published with a bigger company, publish yourself first and decide if that's what you actually want. Because here's the dirty secret. The cheapest part of our input is writing. Well, after Texas labor is then writing. So writing is our cheapest input. So you're not going to make the money you think you deserve for because writing is available and it's um, we, we get it fairly easily. And we have people who are really good at it. You get to produce these words quickly. If you want to write something, having, having another publisher publish it for you is not going to reward you in the ways unless you just want to see it with the really fancy art and you want to see it with the yeah, yeah. really fancy maps. Because fundamentally, what we do is we take good adventures that we know are good we make them uh, retail products, right? You can do all those things. The tools exist for people who are writing new things. And I want you to do it. And I want you to see it. And if you do want to still write for us after you've done it yourself, um, then I really do want to talk to you because we always have things we need. I mean, I I can't tell you how many things we need that are writing involved that not necessarily are product related, right? So um, we good people need everything. But good people, the way to prove yourself is to have, just to have done, done it, finished it, and then talk to us. Well, I, 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 I won't name names because I don't remember the name, but I, I've had, yeah. I had a guy inquire and say, "Look, um, I, I would like Frog God Games to publish something that I, stuff I've written." I said, "Well, what have you had published before?" Well, I haven't anything published for yet. And I'm like, <laughs> I wanted to say, "Look at the writers we've had. We've we've had Steve." No, Steve but first Winter, time I, I mean, we've we've had people show me what shows what you got, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, and hey, look, because a lot of us, the first time that they that, that you and other people ever did it publishing is you 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 ran a Kickstarter. I mean, I mean, Lloyd Metcalf's run Kickstarters. I mean, there's lots of people that run. I mean, Greg Gillespie's run a Kickstarter. Do a Kickstarter, get some get some uh, skins on the wall, and then come back and say, "Here's what I've done." Now, do it uh, digital only. Do it. Do, don't put yourself at financial risk. Don't you don't have to anymore. No, you don't. Don't learn InDesign. Learn Word, and make one. You can make something nice that you can put to PDF that has all the things you can do it through Word. There are lots of channels to do it. And if you don't know them and you're interested in doing it, I mean it. Contact me because I care. Skeeter and I have online. You can search on YouTube. We have nine other people talking about you know small press stuff. One with Greg Gillespie who's in the ch chat here. I mean, he has. We all have different advice, different opinions. But what I can say is. You live in the golden age of making your own stuff. I swear. You it, honestly, God, if, if, if your thing is running games, get a three D printer. You can have everything. If your thing is making games for sale, you all these tools are free, right? They're all available to you in ways that now eventually you can outgrow the free tools, and there are tools that you buy. But in the end, you the guys at TSR in the seventies couldn't imagine what one guy could, oh, right? And, yeah. it's there, and it's there for the taking. So I'm encouraging anybody who wants to do it, do it. If you have a question on where to start, ask me. But people who would just write in and want, hey, I want you to publish something, that's where I send them. It's like, you know, what have you done? Because honestly, when I got hired my job, what I did, well, I made two box sets to a company that had been around 10 years and never made a box set. Right. <laughs> so it's a, it's, it's a niche and you don't know. I didn't plan for this. I certainly did not plan to um, be the CEO of a small to medium sized publishing company where everybody, Treats me like I'm not important. Um, that wasn't my life goal. <laughs> right. But you know, but it's I'll been figure. great. But it's been great. No, and I, I get to do something that I never thought would be possible to do as a job. I get my wife's involved with it now, and my Bill and the people I work with are like family, right? And it, it matters a lot. It's a great deal. And if you want to be a part of it, you, you have the tools. You do. And whether or not you, you, won't ever, you won't be what I, you won't do what I'm doing, but I barely even play games. I always talk about them all day, right? <laughs> But there are other people who uh, like work for us. Like Casey does art direction for it. He came along as a writer originally, and then an artist, and then he managed artists. So he finds artists on DeviantArt. Just be be visible, be public, and um, be 
get used to people not liking what you write, but get be confident in what you write. Because if you write with something you want to play, you write it with clarity, you'll be able to share it on a platform where you can get to the point where people do want to pay for words. Because I can tell you this, once you're known, you can write for something. And you can write 10,000 words that we want. And you can write it in three weeks. And it's the specs we ask for, which is three or four little things, where we give you four, four things. If you can do that, we'll never let you go. Because once you are become known and reliable in a small industry, even if lots of people want to get in, um, we don't want, we'll never tell Wolfgang Bayer about you. Never. <laughs> because he might take your hours. Right? No, it's, mine, it's, mine, it's, mine. All no, the Because you, people who can turn out things on time that are consistently good are a treasure. And yeah. that's what makes, and nobody I'm working with, and nobody I'm working with is full time writers because we don't have those really. Right? They are now because they were teachers and they don't have a school to go to. But the, the, the none of these people are full-time writers, but they are they spend their free time doing this and they're doing the most professional way possible. And once you are recognized for that, you can't lose. You you because we won't give it up. So Greg Phillips to Zach nailing publishing advice. I'm gonna add one thing in. Uh drive through RPG is I would do that before doing Kickstarter. Put out a zine, put out a, a eight page adventure, put out something, but show that you can actually produce something. Uh, Zach was saying blogs, blogs, great, yeah, and do some gaming content, release it under the OGL. But you're gonna have to get yourself known. And how do you get yourself known? You're gonna have to participate in social media. It doesn't mean that you're gonna, and, and best way again, communities are better, much more focused than your general feed. And if you're interested in Labyrinth Lord, join the Labyrinth Lord community and they think, oh, I I produce this adventure. It's pay what you want. Take a peek. Get you you got to produce hey man, before you can step up to the big boys. I, I came into all this because of Grognardia, right? I was sitting on a bus, right? And at San Francisco, when I was living time with my wife. And I'm like, what would happen? I want to go on Vintage D&D thinking I'd buy a module or something. I typed it into Google and bang, there's Grognardia. I'm like, Holy crap, this is only a three day old post it's about Vault of Draft. Like, oh my God, I'm home. <laughs> you know, the communities will do the same thing for everybody else. You'll find a community that gets you linked to other communities where you slowly go out. I ran the ACM for collecting because I was going to be a collector because I didn't know I was going to read my module. I was sure of it, right? And then I, once I started collecting and seeing the modules again and reading them, I got kind of inspired and I wrote a Whisper and Venom, you know, 100 pages, 150 pages plus. I like miniatures. I'll have those too. I'm like, oh, I like maps. Let's hire someone like a great big map. Like, hey, well, I like box sets. I can't buy one anymore. Well, now I know why you can't buy it. It, it sucks. Because they're going to ask when to put together, yes. <laughs> but, no, but those things, those communities are where you start. Yeah, absolutely true. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot It's a lot easier to build up a good rep in, in, in a community than it is to build up your friends list on Facebook or on MeWe or on Twitter. I mean – it, it doesn't happen overnight. There are forums online that are still active. If you're an old school person, yeah, I would go to the ACM and I would go to uh, 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 1974. Uh, there's a few forums that are still pretty active. Dra uh, Dra Dragon's Foot, but they, they, they're not no, as active I, as they and I don't go there as often, but even EM World is pretty active. You know, If you go in the right places, the right parts of these forums, you're going to find people who are interested in the same stuff as you. Yes. Um, I'm not a huge fan of RPG now, but there's a whole publisher's forum that is just separated from all the other stuff that I find not, nonsensical there. That actually gives pretty good advice that is people that are interested in what you are and you learn things each time you go. And honestly, I can't think of anybody that's not a, that I've met that's not approachable. And I'm talking about people who like big time people that I just I, I now can talk to. But I could talk to them way back when, too. And I, I want to be the same way because, I mean, I've gotten good advice from people that have been doing this. Uh, Steve Winter, for example, he's been doing this since I bought a basic set. And he was like giving me advice. I'm like, wow. You know, and honestly, they're good people. And so I'd be part of the forums, create something. And I think that you can see that you can work for these companies. But the work is uh, worth less than your time, I assure you. <laughs> you're not, you're not going to get rich and wealthy. No, not even close. Uh, working in, oh, working no. in the RPGs. For most people, it is a hobby industry. You, you, it, at best, it's your side gig, usually, maybe. No, and I, yeah. I, I, I'm an exception, and I'm very, very happy. There are more astronauts than our professional RPG guys, and it's just the way it is. But I feel lucky for it. But you know, you make compromises and everything else. But I don't encourage anybody to get into this. Going, you know, I think I want to do that for a living. Don't, no, don't do that because I'm telling you right now, it's not. 
that isn't the path you recommend to anybody, but things exist and you never know. I mean, there is somebody some, that is thinking about making a module that's going to do the new, they'll be the next Paizo. You I know, mean, they're going to be the ones who replace, there's always two games, maybe it's going to be them. You never know who you meet or what they can do. And it's amazing. And I don't want to discourage people, but I be realistic when you go into it. And that's why I recommend Drive Through RPG and PDF. I do. Yeah. Because it teaches you all the major skills and lingo without having to spend any money on it. And then if you decide you hate it, because there are things that aren't a lot of fun in this job. And I know that that sounds like a real asshole thing to say, but it's true. It's true because I have stress and anxiety all the time over the stupidest stuff that is unrelated to actually playing D&D. In fact, I don't talk about D&D all that much. But I love this. But to be aware that you go through the process without any stakes in it, and you'll think it'll do you a lot of good than if you try it and hate it. You know, because it is a job, even when it's not professionally and unpaid, it's still a job. Now, if you're going to be successful, you got to treat it like that. Really, you know, you do. down to it. You got to wake up every day and think it's like a, an actual job. And I have to do that problem now because I have to wake up every day and tell my no good and no good partners and coworkers and some other partners I don't name names headset. Um, mm. Yeah. <laughs> Those you don't know, I work with Mike. He's a uh, minority owner. Oh, 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 hi, hold on. I work there still? Oh, shit. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. You, I you, forgot part of it. you can't get away from it. Whoa, That's I part. forgot about that. Oh, You're dang. unfireable. <laughs> Damn it. Damn. Kim George, Damn you, back. Kim, we're going to have to have a talk about that. That's not, you don't really love him. You just think you love him. Yeah, uh, loving Zach might not be healthy, but that's okay. Mass Jen, she'll tell you she's not. <laughs> yeah, well, well, the, well, we've had a we've had a fun little convo here. Yeah, covered, yeah. covered a lot of ground. Been great. I can't hang. I, I don't know. We're going to talk about Monday now. I, don't, I have no clue. We're going to talk about Monday, except that, uh, I know. Uh, Skeeter's if you want be there. Monday on Goddamn It, Zach, you will yes. hear the true story of what happened at GaryCon. Three years ago, we've already, we, we, we've already talked about that. Like we, we had Skeeter on the show as a guest. Like, did you show the video? You know, no, I don't think we showed the video. Do we have to show the video? video. We're not gonna I show, can show the video. video. I'm gonna sue. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want the uh, I want the rights to that bag. I, that's me in the video. I want the I want the rights to that video. I'm gonna Mike make I'm gonna make a music video. video. <laughs> I'm gonna make, I'm gonna just, make a music video. Know, just so you know, that which has been seen cannot cannot be unseen, and I did see it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know what? I actually would love to see the video to see a different perspective from my point of view. What what I saw. No, you hear you but... in the background going, "Are you next?" And that's how it ends. <laughs> <laughs> You're next. One of the most ominous words so, in the English language. Tune in Monday for you to hear the hear the horrible story. If you haven't heard it, it it's the only uh, sense of all that's funny. Let's not. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about. We're going to no, talk we're about just, small. We're, we're going to talk about small video. press seminars and no. Yeah. Anyway. We're, yeah, oh, we're gonna, thank we're, God. we're gonna talk about other things. We're gonna talk about how much fun you can have gaming with uh, friends, and we're gonna talk about um, you know, what TotalCon meant to us this weekend. We're, we're gonna we're gonna have a good conversation. We're not gonna talk. We, about we gotta get Skeeter back his wallet, right? Mm, no, Skeeter doesn't get anything back. Skeeter, <laughs> Skeeter's taken from this industry too much. He doesn't get anything back anymore. <laughs> He's taken too much from the industry. Too much, I tell you. All right. <laughs> so I see you guys Monday on our show, yeah. No, yeah, I guess definitely. so. Yeah. Your show is a lot more actually a lot easier because you don't have volatility is like half the mix, dude. No, no, we don't have volatility. Me, me, me and Mike are you know <laughs> we'll show uh, you. <laughs> Well, we're used to working retail together, so it's just kind of like, yeah, you know, just yeah. show the shit sure. and, and talk the crap. <clears throat> uh folks, tomorrow at noon I have I believe Mark Finn uh doing more of the Zine Quest uh live streams. Tomorrow night, I suspect we will have a Gamer's Health with Rachel and myself. Uh, Monday, as you heard from Zach, uh, Mike and I will be uh, guesting on God Damn It, Zach, GDM, GDZ. GDS. Whatever the fuck it is. Oh, yes. Whatever the fuck. Sounds like, sounds like a venereal disease. That's all I can tell you. But uh, it has those abbreviations. It's got to be. Uh, folks. Don't wear your shirt. If you wear your goddamn exact shirt, you're bold. I'm not going to be your friend anymore. Uh, I couldn't, I, wait, I couldn't find my goddamn exact shirt. You lie. I, I don't it. believe you. I look, you're well known. Well known. I, 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 I can wear my frog god shirt. I got a couple of those, but I, I right, can't yeah, find I my goddamn exact. Mm. Yeah, okay. um, folks, none of us here are medical professionals. We don't intend to give you any medical advice. Uh, but we are going to, I'm going to say the following. You, I, I've heard this multiple times when I was younger. 
I read the, read the Dragon magazine issue about fireballs and the and, and, and the cubic volume. You wouldn't throw a fireball in a 10 by 10 room, right? Common sense. After you've thrown it, you say, I wouldn't, why kill my party with it with a fireball? I'm like, well, you just did. Like, I got common sense. Well, if you have common sense, use it in the world of COVID. All right. Protect yourself, your loved ones, your family. I'm not telling you what to do. You have common sense. Make half an attempt. Uh, be safe. Well, I'm be an asshole because he's such a nice person for saying that for everybody. Wow, thanks, Eric. You're welcome. Jeez, come on. You're probably one of those people that threw the fireball. Like, I wouldn't have done that. Come on. He's like, yeah. I've heard the same issue with Dragon that you did. I wouldn't have thrown the fireball. All right. All right, gentlemen. Thank you very right, much. Folks. Thank you, audience. Uh, right. www.froggeyegames.com. We, uh, we'd love to have you come check us out. All right, buddy. Yes. Any, for any problems, email uh, uh, badmike at froggeyegames.com. Uh, no, no don't email. Uh, stop emailing me. I don't, I don't like this. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want any more emails. All right. We're out.